the Canucks going with 11 forwards and seven defensemen in this one against the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, text coming in. Plot twist. Quinn Hughes playing first line center. <laughs> Finally, he gets to play center. Finally gets to play center. You know, we haven't even talked about Quinn Hughes today. He had the two goals last night. Felt like he was having a bit of a captain's moment trying to drag his team back into that game. And uh, obviously it was uh, felled by some of the, um, well, the shift that immediately followed his second goal of the game where Carson Soucy just threw the puck into no man's land and turned around the other way for the Brett Howden goal. But Hughes is now second in points in franchise history. I know we talked about how good Hughes is yesterday on Canuck Central, which you can go and find back on the podcast. But it really is remarkable that this player is uh, already going to be the top-scoring franchise defenseman probably by next season and uh, is having as good a year as he is, has now tied Elias Pettersson on points for 84 on the year and just trails JT Miller for the team lead in points. All right. Hey, we were talking about him yesterday yeah. and we said, Hey, he's only two points back of Oland. Well, he got to Oland. So <laughs> well done, Quinn. He got to Oland uh, now tied on points with Matthias Oland in Canucks franchise history. All right. It's time for tonight's betting odds brought to you by play now sports, the official sports betting partner of the Vancouver Canucks. Let's bring in Matt Lee of BCLC. Thanks for this Matt. Canucks on the second half of a back-to-back in Arizona against the Coyotes. What are the betting odds telling us about tonight's game? Yeah, betting odds telling us the Canucks are road favorites tonight at 1.71. And last night, obviously, a game to forget. And the Canucks are going to have to forget it very quickly uh, against the Coyotes team, guys, that I, I don't think is necessarily going to be a walk in the park here. I mean, this is the same team that beat the Predators uh, last week to snap their huge streak. They played the Rangers tough over the weekend. And now they've got four days of rest to get ready for tonight. So the Canucks are definitely going to have to earn this one. They definitely do. And, you know, the Coyotes can get pretty loose here. But the Canucks, as long as they play their game, should be able to get the W. So I'm going with the Canucks winning. But the twist I'm adding to it is two Canucks teams winning, the Abbotsford Canucks and the Vancouver Canucks. Yeah, I love this one. I think this is the first time we've had a Nabby Canucks odds boost uh, here on playnow.com. But at 3.0, nice bit of value here. I mean, we know that the Canucks are probably going to have to come out of the gate strong after such a no-show in the first five, ten minutes yesterday. Definitely need this one if they want to keep the Oilers at bay. And I know a lot of scoreboard watching happening today as well. And, you know, just down over in the Fraser Valley, you got the Abbey Canucks. They've won four straight. And you've got uh, Elias Pettersson, the defense version, and Jonathan Lekaramaki starting their AHL careers over there the last couple of days too. So uh, an exciting time for both Canucks clubs, really. Yeah, and uh, Abbotsford Canucks going back to the playoffs, uh, recently clinching a spot. All right, uh, I'm going down Narrative Street. Uh, JT Miller has been the guy that's carried the Canucks to a lot of victories. He's been uh, their strongest force in their forward group for a little while now as the Canucks still look to get the most out of Elias Pettersson and get his game going ahead of the playoffs. But for now, coming off of a tough loss last night, JT, the emotional leader of this team, I've got JT to score and the Canucks to win. That's my play tonight against the Coyotes. Yeah, I love the love the uh, narrative that he's the emotional leader. I mean, I call him the adrenaline engine. Really, uh, there's no better option to go to than the team's leading scorer. And it, seemingly every step of the season, guys, when Miller has been needed, he has found ways to revive this Canucks team when they need a wake up call. So tonight, I, I feel like maybe they do need one. They need that reminder that they're still a very good hockey club. Miller with 35 goals on the air might get to 36 tonight. This one's at 4.0 on playnow.com. Yeah, and uh, there is one more uh, uh, boosted selection available. Uh, I thought you'd never ask. That. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm going to bring it up now. It was available for selection. I didn't pick it. I Reach. went away from it hoping Sat would pick it. But I, like I said, I mean, you leave that and something else. I'm usually taking something else. But Garland proved me wrong not too long ago. He can prove me long, wrong again. Garland to score tonight gets a boost as well yeah just didn't have the the cojones to <laughs> ante up to this one ASAP. I, I, I call mean, it faith well, i call it faith the lack of faith sure sure <laughs> we'll call it that the grapefruits let's say uh look he's, he's still getting his looks he's still generating his chances and you know for my money i feel like garland has been at least one of the more noticeable connects as of late still skating very hard out there whether it's a 6-3 loss to vegas or they're up uh, against the la Kings. so 
for me, uh, Garland still getting a lot of chances and a lot of looks in a prime spot. So 4.15 on playnow.com for this one, too. Matt, we appreciate the time as always. Thanks for this. Thanks, guys. There is Matt Lee of BCLC. It's the Play Now Sports pregame show. Receive your $10 sports free bet when you make a same-game parlay wager of $10 or more on NHL games. Combine multiple selections from one game to complete your same-game parlay wager. No promo code required. Visit playnow.com slash hockey SGP to learn more. Conditions apply. Must be 19-plus to play. If you gamble, use your game sense. Uh, I want to hit a couple texts real quick. Yes. This one here says, everyone freaking out about Friedman playing wing. Myers has been slotted, slotted in on defense all year, and no one said a, said a single thing about it. <laughs> I, uh, Myers hasn't even been that bad. He's been fine. I mean, hey, like some people brought him up as um, unsung hero even. There you go. I mean, I don't know he, if I would say that, but. No. I, no. Like Myers has been mostly fine this mostly year. Mostly fine. I mean, the more structured and uh predictable environment has been very helpful to Tyler Myers' game. Some would say less chaotic. Yes. Yes. Um and and also the one thing though, defending two-on-ones seemed to be a very difficult thing for a lot of players in this team. Yes. Particularly Tyler Myers. Yes. Like if I he, guess he thinks if he just like lays out across the ice, it's it's the way that he can cover the most space. Does somebody tell him if he lays down, he's two hundred feet? <laughs> Maybe he thinks like you know he covers the entire span of the ice. Does he know saucer passes are a thing? It's like it's just when you're defending a two on one, I just want to see somebody take something away. Too often the Canucks don't take anything away. The pass isn't, isn't being taken away. The shot's not really being taken away. Like on that two on one, like, you didn't do anything, and all you yeah. did was lay down and the puck went across. And next thing you know, it's a goal, right? It's like just, just, just take away the pass and let the goalie deal with the shooter, yeah. or take the shot away and force the pass and have the goalie cheat over. You know what I mean? And, and too often do we see on the two on ones, guys don't defend them well. And I know I'm going off on a bit of a tangent here, but I'm just saying. I also just want to say. Um, it was a really horrible spot that Carson Soucy put Tyler Myers in last night. Yeah, not a great one. <laughs> but, I mean, but again, like it was one of those games. We know we talk so much, the coach talks about one guy making a mistake, the second guy can't make a mistake. Yeah, and you gotta, you gotta, you gotta you have to cover for your teammates. Yeah, this was not a night where guys were covering for each other. Yeah, Co- mistakes were being compounded. One guy made a mistake, another guy made another mistake. Guys didn't back each other up. There wasn't a lot of puck support, and those are the types of things that teams when they're together do well this team has shown that they do well and that was about as as disconnected a performance as we've seen from canucks players recently what was almost even more surprising was how often they got caught with three forwards below the puck in the offensive zone Uh, it's something i've praised them about all year long is just how regularly they have three players above the puck so even if there's a loose puck that gets turned the other way in the offensive zone and there's a rush chance that's tried going back the other way, there's always three men back. Mm-hmm. There's always three players there to make sure you don't get caught. And so often last night there was two-on-ones, three-on-twos. It was just over and over and over and over again that the Canucks were getting blitzed for odd man rushes going back the other way. It's not something that happened regularly. You saw it with Teddy Bluger on the ice. Like Teddy Bluger has been one of the more – Reliable defensive players. How many so bad often penalties this has Teddy Bluger taken at bad times? The last Lately, like two weeks, it's, it's been rough. At the end of the second, too, like yeah. he took that you know that useless. Like the Canucks are kind of fighting back into the game. They're down three goals. Have a couple of good shifts, and there you go taking a bad penalty late in the period. Like why? Yeah, you know, and he's had a couple. He's had a few of those, and you know those the one are against Dallas, things. right? Yeah, the high stick. It's like and he's had a couple of high sticks the last little while. And the coaches mentioned of him too that you have to be more responsible with your stick, and and these are players that. This is uncharacteristic for them yeah. from what we've seen this season. Like Carson Soucy hasn't made a ton of mistakes. You know, It's different from what we've seen over the larger sample size of the total season. Yeah. 100%. That being said, kind of coming at a time where people are worried because the playoffs kind of start in a couple of weeks. Uh, that being said, it's more like three weeks, two and a half. Who's counting? A um, couple of texts. Whether Quinn wins the Norris or not, we are witnessing a true Norris winning season. Go Canucks, go. Now up to 15 goals, 69 assists, nice, and 84 points. Honestly, like, I always kind of wondered, is is Quinn actually capable of getting more than, say, 10 goals in a season? Like, he's had eight before, close yeah. to nine. You know, he's been close, so I'm like, hey, he can get 10 goals at some point. But is he ever going to be a player that can consistently get you, say, 15 or so? I wasn't sure. Yeah. Like, he's proven he can do that. And so much so that... Like, I don't think a 20-goal season at some point in his career is out of the equation. 
Is, no, the the way that he's played lately, um, and the the volume of shots that uh, this team and he takes from the point could lead him to having a bigger season. Does he need to work on his clapper a little bit? Maybe. But that quick wrister, quick snapshot is is his bread and butter now. It is. And he he's, he does a really good job of getting it through. Yeah. And he does have a bit more velocity on his shot in general. Like, he's become a better shooter. And, you know, if he can finish this year with, like, 16, 17 even, then to me, he has a chance to be a 20-goal scorer at some point. You know, and whether he's going to do that consistently, even the best goal scoring defensemen have a very hard time hitting 20 consistently. Yes, it's very difficult. Like, you know, they'll usually be in the high teens, maybe or low teens even, but they're in the teens in terms of goal scoring 13 and more. Right. Can Quinn become that type of player? And at this stage with what he's shown this season, I think he's very capable of it. Yeah, even Carlson through his peak did it uh, a couple of times when he was with Ottawa, did it just the one time last year with yeah. with San Jose. And he is he's many, a goal-scoring defenseman. Yeah, yeah, many regard him as, you know, a generational offensive defenseman in uh, the NH- in NHL history. So, like, Kale McCarr is different. He had the 28-goal season. Yeah. You know, he has 19 this year. Like, he's going to be one of those rare breeds that's going to have 20-plus consistently. But, you know... Um, I don't know if Quinn's going to be that. Yeah, He's obviously uh, a lot closer to the Carlson range, maybe. But he has uh, he has definitely found a goal scoring gear that I didn't know. And uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, we 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 talked about him wondering if he had it, and this year he has shown that. So the other thing I would say are the Canucks relying too much on the point shot lately. Uh, yeah, I, I'd say so. In the I mean, offensive end. There are a lot of shots. I mean, they're taking more shots. I mean, even last night, they took, like, what was it, 46 shot attempts, five on five. Um, they out, out attempted uh, Vegas, obviously. But score effects. Score effects, you're chasing the game. But they, they've had a hard time getting a lot of shots through. Yeah. The Canucks shot attempt numbers the last little bit have been decent. The shots they're getting on net have not been as good. And part of it is there's been a lot more of distance shooting happening, trying to get shots on goal that aren't kind of getting through. Uh, and, and that kind of goes back to getting inside a bit more, the coach talks about getting down low a bit more. We're not quite seeing that low to high play as, as often. Like, for instance, when Bluger and Garland, now we're seeing it a bit from Garland. He's made that play from behind the goal line. Yeah. The, the the blind passes to Joshua, to Miller. We've seen it a bit here from him here and there. But consistently, that line was generating low to high plays all the time. And those are the types of things I want to see them do more of. Canucks and Coyotes. Uh, so the Canucks did throw a little bit of a curveball, if you're just tuning in. 11 forwards and 7 defensemen for the Canucks tonight. Arshdie Baines and Pew Suter are coming out of the lineup. Mark Friedman is coming into the lineup uh, for the Vancouver Canucks. So he is uh, expected to play, as is uh, Nils Oman. And a little bit of a different... Look from the Canucks going with 11 forwards and seven defensemen. Elias Pettersson still playing with Nils Hoaglander and Brock Besser. JT Miller with Connor Garland and Dakota Joshua. It's a big one. Canucks needing this one as they try to close out the Pacific Division over these final seven games. Need the dub tonight against Arizona. Coming up, the call from Randy Janda and Brendan Batchelor. Canucks and Coyotes on the Sportsnet Radio Network. Play Now Sports, the official sports betting partner of the Vancouver Canucks. As you get ready for hunting season, whether your game is bear or anything else, it's time to head to Siwash Sports. Rifles, shotguns, optics, accessories, ammo, archery gear, whatever you need, Siwash has it. Get your guns serviced or upgrade your gear with brands you trust. They even have 410 in stock, as well as paintball, pellet, and airsoft gear. At BC's newest Browning and Winchester dealer, the Fraser Valley's Siwash Sports, in Chilliwack and online at siwashsports.ca. Navigating the seas of business, the waves can be unpredictable and overwhelming. Stay on course with Crow's trusted advisors. From startups to seasoned enterprises, Crow offers advice that protects and strategies that succeed. Because every smart decision begins with expert advice. Visit crowmackay.ca to learn more. Crow, smart decisions, lasting value. If you know your face-offs from your playoffs, you're ready to play now. If you've ever explained icing, you're ready to play now. If you know what PPG stands for, hint, 
It's power play goal. We're so ready for Play Now Sports, the official sports betting partner of the Vancouver Canucks. Get started with a $20 free bet at playnow.com slash radio. Conditions apply. Know your limit. Play within. It must be 19+. plus. There's a growing need for mental health support on the job site. BCCSA has launched a program that provides resources to increase awareness of mental health and its potential incidence and impact in the workplace. Learn how to recognize a possible mental health issue and how to access resources that can make all the difference for you or a workmate. Managing Minds at Work is an online, on-demand course followed by an in-person workshop. Start online today. Sign up now at bccsa.ca. Play Now Sports, the official sports betting partner of the Vancouver Canucks. The Canucks laid an egg last night in Las Vegas, falling 6-3 to three to the Golden Knights. And Rick Tockett wants each individual on his team to step up their game. I think as an individual, you look at your game, you know, you, you, and how can I play better? You know, what can I do to contribute to the team? If everybody does that, you know, you hope the next game will improve on that. Because, you know, like I said, that's not the type of game you want when you, you know, you're getting a stretch drive. So we got to find it quickly. Tonight, Vancouver concludes the last back-to-back -back set of the season in the desert. It's the Vancouver Canucks and the Arizona Coyotes. NHL hockey is on the air. You're listening to Vancouver Canucks hockey on the Sportsnet Radio Network. Brendan Bachelor and Randy Jando with you tonight. Thanks for joining us again as we continue to get you set for the Vancouver Canucks and the Arizona Coyotes. Tonight, the second of three meetings in the season series between these two clubs. The Canucks picked up a win in the first matchup, and the final matchup will be a week from tonight in Vancouver. But for this one this evening, Randy, let's take a look at the keys to the game brought to you by Yellow Cap Vancouver, your go-to for a safe and affordable ride anytime. Download the app and book your ride. Today, our first key for the Canucks is to bring the energy. Absolutely. Bring the energy. Bring the battle. Rick Tockett said it himself. Some guys played a light game against Vegas. He can't have that during the stretch as you get ready for the playoffs. you got to fully commit. Win wall battles and play through players. Uh, make sure you focus on those details. If you do that, this team has a chance for success, but you got to make sure that you bring that battle level. Our second key is composure. The Canucks got behind early last night, couldn't get back into the game and on two different occasions they gave up a goal less than 30 seconds after they had scored one themselves and it's nobody's going to play a mistake free hockey game that happens but do you compound mistakes do you make multiple mistakes on the same play you have to avoid that other teams are going to bring their best effort you have to make sure that you don't buckle under that pressure going down 4-1 in the first period you can't win hockey games that way so you got to stay composed Tonight's betting odds are brought to you by Play Now Sports, the official sports betting partner of the Vancouver Canucks. The Canucks are the road favorites tonight, so a $10 bet on the Canucks money line odds has a potential total payout of $17.14. The scratches tonight for Vancouver, Thatcher Demko and Elias Lindholm remain on the injured list. Pew Suter out of the lineup tonight. We don't have the details as to whether that is a healthy scratch or injury related, but he won't play tonight. Phil DiGiuseppe, Archdeep Baines, and Noah Juleson are also out of the Vancouver lineup for the Coyotes. Travis Boyd is out with a pectoral injury, while Barrett Hayton has a lower body injury. No healthy scratches for the Coyotes. It's Arthur Shilov's in goal for the Canucks. He made 20 saves in the 3-2 win over Anaheim on Sunday. At the other end of the ice, it's the former Kamloops Blazer, Connor Ingram, who struggled to get results of late. Just three wins in his last 15 games with an 886 save percentage in that stretch. The starting lineup is presented by Angry Otter Liquor. Get your mitts on your game day favorites at Angry Otter Liquor. The Coyotes will start with the defensive pairing of J.J. Moser and Sean Dursey. Up front, Lawson Krause begins the game on left wing with Logan Cooley down the middle. And Dylan Gunther on the right side for the Canucks. Quinn Hughes starts at left defense with Philip Hironik to his right. The forward line is Niels Hoaglander, Elias Pettersson, and Brock Besser. Mark Friedman draws back into the Vancouver lineup as a seventh defenseman. He'll play his first game since March 3rd against the Ducks. And we'll have the opening face-off next on Alpine Credits Canucks Hockey on Sportsnet 650 and the Sportsnet Radio Network.
If you know your face-offs from your playoffs, you're ready to play now. If you've ever explained icing, you're ready to play now. If you know what PPG stands for, hint, it's power play goal. You're so ready for Play Now Sports, the official sports betting partner of the Vancouver Canucks. Get started with a $20 free bet at playnow.com slash radio. Conditions apply. Know your limit. Play within. Must be 19 plus. In a world where business knows no borders, Crow provides global reach on a personal scale. Spanning more than 145 countries, Crow's trusted advisors have the knowledge and expertise to add value to your business. From traditional accounting services to business consulting, Crow creates solutions tailored to your unique needs. Let Crow's expertise elevate your business. Visit crowmackay.ca to learn more. Crow. Smart decisions. Lasting value. Waypoint Insurance has been here for over 150 years, seeking and sourcing ways to fill your home with safety, comfort, and peace of mind. They travel the same roads, trek the same trails, and make their way through life's adventures, setting their sights on a life worth living. Because this is Waypoint's home, their playground, their livelihood. So go explore. From business to home to auto to personal insurance, Waypoint has your back. Waypoint Insurance, together protecting what you love. Visit waypoint.ca. How many emails, text messages, notifications for calendar reminders of meetings you don't want to go to are all waiting for you to deal with right now? Well, your legendary escape from it all awaits. The number five orange is open right now. That's a meeting invite worth accepting. Pre-game, post-game, even during the game. The number five orange. Hughes cuts in front again, doing laps in the San Jose zone. Quinn Hughes shoots, he scores! And that goal was all Quinn Hughes. Hey, Vancouver. Rogers wants you to stay connected to your Vancouver Canucks. The Canucks are off and running. Well, what a heads-up play here by Quinn Hughes. Catch every goal on Canada's largest and most reliable 5G network with Rogers 5G mobile plans. To learn more, visit rogers.com forward slash 5G. That's rogers.com forward slash 5G. Breaking story from Alpine News Network. Sandra and Kabir are celebrating 50 years of marriage by turning their boring bedroom into a spicy one. Oh, my. Alpine Credit sent a super strength hero to help with a home renovation loan. New floors, windows, a heart-shaped button that plays this tune. Okay, I think that's quite enough. Own your home? Need a loan? Alpine Credits can help. Alpine Credits, where homeowners get approved. Hey, this is Brock Besser. He scores with one second left in the period. And you're on the whole of the Canucks. Sportsnet Radio Network. Welcome back, Brendan Bachelor and Randeep Janda with you, and it's just about time to drop the puck between the Vancouver Canucks and the Arizona Coyotes in the 76th game of the regular season for Vancouver. Canucks are first in the Pacific Division, 46 wins, 21 losses, and eight more in either overtime or the shootout. The Coyotes, meanwhile, are seventh in the Central Division. They are 31, 38, and five. Canucks wearing the road white uniforms with the blue and green trim will skate from right to left in the first period the coyotes in their home kachina black jerseys with all sorts of colors of trim on those uniforms will go from left to right the referees are carter sandlack and jordan samuels thomas libor sachanik and brandon garrelitz are on the lines and randy i mentioned it just before the break but mark friedman into the lineup his first game in a month playing as a seventh defenseman as we'll see rick talk for the first time as the canucks head coach dress 11 forwards and seven blue liners and when it comes to the forward group you have niels oman and sam lafferty on that fourth line whatever that may look like but remember it's going to be Pedersen, miller bluger down the middle of the ice which they'll get rotations probably playing with that fourth line the thing I'll be watching for, Batch, is how much is that fourth line even playing? In the playoffs, generally, if you go 11-7, and seven, those guys don't get much ice time. It's probably around that 7, 8, 9-minute range. What happens tonight now that you've gone 11-7? and seven? The other thing it does give you the opportunity to do is to get your top players out there in a mismatch. If you can sneak a Pedersen or a Miller out there with those fourth-line guys, you're on the road so you don't have last change. It's a chance to kind of turn the momentum back in your favor. 
and it might speak to how Rick Tockett thought some of his depth lines were outplayed last night in Vegas. Absolutely, and that's why Arshdi Bantz is not in the lineup. That's why even Pew Suter, a guy that's played in the top six, uh, did not have much of an impact in that game against Vegas. One shot on goal. You need more from that player as well. So this is going to be a great opportunity for Pedersen to get moving. Uh, also, JT Miller and Teddy Bluger having a chance to play with maybe a couple of different wingers to see what they can do. As the pregame festivities have concluded, and the game will get underway momentarily, Logan Cooley will meet Elias Patterson at center ice to contest the opening faceoff. Vancouver's lone visit to Mullet Arena this season on the campus of Arizona State University. Logan Cooley wins the opening faceoff. Played to center by J.J. Moser, but it's found by Pedersen. He gains the Arizona line. Tried to play it deep, but it goes as far as Sean Jersey. Clear to the line, not out. Held in by Besser for Pedersen. To the slot right to the goal. Hoaglander tipped it wide at the top of the crease. Strong start from the Canucks inside the first 20 seconds. As Logan Cooley banks it to his own blue line near side. Drops it back to Moser in his own zone. Now for Jersey. Right wing to center for Cooley. Rink wide to Lawson Kraus. Into the Vancouver zone. Driving wide on Hironik, who forces him to the end boards. Hughes gets the puck behind his own net. And he'll skate it to center with speed. Left wing for Pedersen. The Coyote blue line. Leaves on the near boards for Hoaglander. Puck bouncing. He can't settle it. And the Coyotes regain possession as Lawson Kraus holds it in his own zone and drops it back behind his own net for Michael Kesselring. And the Pedersen line heading over to the bench. A good start there as they were very compact and battling hard in the middle of the ice to win pucks in the offensive zone. Created a good chance. Connor Garland with speed to the Coyote line. Right wing. Danced into the corner but lost the puck. And it's found on the near side by Kesselring who lifts it back to the Vancouver blue line. Myers with a pass up the right side. Puck is tipped in deep by Miller. Joshua on the forecheck. Laid a hit down low. Kesselring gets it up the far boards. Nick Bugstad after the puck. Tied up by Ian Cole, who pinched down the wall. He couldn't clear, but the Canucks will change, and Valimaki will control behind his own net and set up the breakup. Yusuf Valimaki and Matias Michelli at his own line. Shadowed by Teddy Bluger back into his own zone. Left it for Valimaki, who flipped it high in the air to the Canuck blue line, and Zadorov's got it in his own zone. Try to pass ahead. That was blocked back deep by Jack McBain. Now Ian Cole can't clear on the far side. Coyotes hold the puck in. The goal's for the right point. Josh Brown with a long wrist shot. Missed past the glove side of Shilovs, who fell in the crease. Might have been contacted. Now a centering pass for McBain, right circle. He wasn't able to settle it, and Pod Colson brings it to center for the Canucks left wing to the red line. He'll float it into the right corner in the Coyote end. Brown back to the puck. Pressured by McKayev. Turned it over to Oman. McKayev's got it right corner. Left point. Carson Soucy. Long wrist shot. Missed past the glove side of Connor Ingram. And McKayev at the right point. Dumps it back in. Oman on the inboards. Pinned to the wall by the former Canuck, Travis Dermott. McBain in to help out. Able to get it free near corner. Big collision as Josh Brown takes down Sam Lafferty in the inboards. The Coyotes get it to center. But Dakota Joshua knocks the puck down, and Lafferty dumps it back in. So early on, we're seeing Dakota Joshua get the double shift assignment on the fourth line with only 11 Canuck forwards dressed for this one. Mark Friedman back in his own zone, leaves behind the net for Quinn Hughes. Hughes sweeps it up the near boards. Joshua can't clear the zone, reverses to Hughes deep in his own end. Chased to the end wall by a four-checking Michael Carcone, but Hughes escapes to the red line. Banks it into the Coyotes zone. Goes after Moser on the forward check. Can't find the puck. And it's lifted back to center by Alex Kerfoot. Just over three minutes gone. First period. No score. The Canucks and the Coyotes. Here's Besser to the Arizona line. Drives into the right corner. Rims it behind the net. Hoaglander laid a hit on Jersey. Knocked him to the ice. And Besser gets it back top of the right circle. Behind the net for Hoaglander. Stick handling below the goal line. Niels Hoaglander trying to pass it on the slide. Intended for Besser. But intercepted by Gunther and the Coyotes cut back to the Vancouver line. Logan Cooley on the left wing tried to make a move. Was stripped of the puck by Hughes and he'll get it back from Hironik behind his own net. And a good job by Philip Hironik to track back. Arizona's a fast team and they can get up ice real quick. But the Canucks defenseman locks it down. Garland driving left wing into the Coyotes zone. Leaves near circle for Joshua. Behind the net to Garland. Out of the left corner. Feeds the line. Zadorov one time. Snapshot stopped by Ingram. 
with Miller screening at the top of the crease. 357 gone in the first. No score, the Canucks and the Coyotes. Plenty of continuous action there as the Vancouver Canucks giving us plenty of different looks. And Mark Friedman playing his first game since March 3rd. That was against Anaheim on the Canucks' last road trip where he had one shot on goal, played 12 minutes and 54 seconds. So getting a chance to play as the seventh defenseman on that last shift was next to Quinn Hughes, but I'm sure he's going to have a few different partners tonight. As well, all the defensemen potentially with seven of them in the lineup. Friedman playing his 22nd NHL game of the season. He did have a short four-game conditioning stint with the Abbotsford Canucks, in which he put up four points. Zadorov at his own line gets it off the glass near side out to center. Michael Kessel rings back to it in his own zone for the Coyotes. Threw it to the far boards for Nick Bukestad. Cleared it out to center and Mikheyev ends up chopping it back deep into his own zone. Nikita Zadorov behind his own net. Try to pass to center out of the reach of Teddy Bluger. Icing against Vancouver. 438 gone in the first period. No score. The Canucks and the Coyotes. Jack 96-9 is playing whatever. Rock, pop, hip-hop, 80s, 90s. The greatest hits of all time. They've got it all. Just tell your smart speaker to play Jack 96-9. Arizona comes into this game scoring a lot of goals of late. Number of players really putting up the points and goals, but they're allowing a lot as well. Allowed eight goals to the Rangers in their last game and five of those goals in the third period. Coyotes five and three in their last eight games, so playing some decent hockey. As Bluger wins the defensive zone faceoff to Nikita Zadorov, rims it behind the net up the near side. Mikheyev tips it to center, and here's Pod Colson driving to the Coyote line. Draw pass for Bluger. Now to Ian Cole up in the rush. Back to Bluger, bottom of the circle. To the line for Susie Long. Wrist shot, missed the net. Rebound near side. Bluger couldn't get to it, but now he lays out to clear it to Cole. Top of the right circle for Susie. His shot was blocked. Susie gets his own rebound, plays it to the right wing corner for Bluger. Bluger feeds the line to Ian Cole, who couldn't settle a bouncing pocket. Rolled out to center, and he dumps it back in as Ingram leaves the blue paint and drops to Travis Dermott behind the goal. Two very good looks for Carson Soucy. First missed the net, and then after that was blocked as he ended up taking a little too much time there. Coyotes go offside of the Vancouver blue line. 5-18 into the first period of a scoreless game between the Canucks and the Coyotes. Vancouver credited with two shots. Arizona has not been able to test Arthur Shilovs as of yet. And at that whistle, Liam O'Brien having a conversation with Sam Lafferty. Liam O'Brien, not a point-per-game player in the NHL, but he is one against the Vancouver Canucks. He scored five points in five games against the Canucks. He does produce. He's a gritty player. Last time out, he had a fight against Nikita Zadorov against the Vancouver Canucks as well. He produces penalty minutes, too. Leads the league with 153 this year. So... More likely than not, we'll see him go to the box at some point this evening. Lafferty able to clear a puck out of his own zone to center. It's knocked down and dumped back in by Alex Kerfoot. Shelov's out of the goal, leaves near corner for Zadorov. Passes to center for Niels Hoaglander. He'll gain the red line and dump it in. As Hoaglander and Pedersen are out there with Lafferty on this shift. And the Coyotes break back to center. Logan Cooley, right wing to the Vancouver line, dumps it near corner. His first two out of the four check. Force behind the net by Hironic. Try to centering pass. It rolls to the line. Valimaki holds in to the left circle for Dylan Gunther. Pushed to the boards by Pedersen. Gunther played it behind the net. Now a centering pass in front for Kraus, who got a wrist shot away off the setup from Logan Cooley behind the net. And Shelovs makes his first save of the night. 6.08 gone in the first. No score. Vancouver and Arizona on Alpine Credits Canucks Hockey. Streaming on the Sportsnet app and along the Sportsnet radio network. Landlords spend 76 hours managing their property in a year. That's 19 date nights. 25 hockey games. And 37. Dad, let's get some ice cream. Moments. What could you be doing with your time? At Hope Street, we help busy landlords get their time back. Live life, get paid. Become an armchair landlord today. Hope Street. Because life's too short to spend it managing properties. HopeStreet.ca Wouldn't it be nice to buy name brand ski boots, alpine or backcountry, for prices as low as $199? This Saturday at 9 a.m. at the destination in North Vancouver, they'll be out on the tables in our parking lot sale. The city's biggest demo ski fleet will also be out there, along with X rentals and brand new leftover skis for prices you won't believe. This is a sale you shouldn't miss, the parking lot sale at the destination in North Van, Vancouver's favorite little ski shop. 
Okay, British Columbia, warm up those keyboard fingers and get ready to make a difference. The Canucks for Kids Fund Telethon is now live. From now until game day on April 10th, you can help families across the province with proceeds going to Canuck Place Children's Hospice, Canucks Autism Network, and BC Children's Hospital. With every donation, you have a chance to win a 2024 Toyota Corolla hatchback. Visit Canucks.com slash telethon to donate today. That's Canucks.com slash telethon. Hi, this is Matthew Demko, and you're on the home of the Canucks, Sportsnet 650. 608 into the first period. There's no score between the Canucks and the Arizona Coyotes. Enjoy a good selly? You're ready to play now. Get your $20 free bet at playnow.com slash radio. Must be 19 plus to play. Conditions apply. Elias Patterson wins a faceoff of the Vancouver zone. Back to the far corner for Philip Hironic. Got it to center for Besser. Ahead to Hoaglander. Drop to Patterson, who gains the Coyote line and dumps it into the near corner. Patterson on the four check, battling with Kesselring on the end boards. Logan Cooley on the back check, able to get the puck free. And he passes left wing to center for Lawson Kraus. Gains the Vancouver line. Drops to Cooley. Now into the high slot. Here's a chance. Stick handling into the middle of the ice was Valabaki. He couldn't get a shot away. Is forced back to the line by Pedersen and plays it into space for Jersey left circle. Sean Jersey down the far boards into the left corner. Back to Dylan Gunther at the line. Right side one time drive wired wide of the net by Valamaki. And Heronix after it on the far boards. Lawson Kraus left corner. Carries behind the Vancouver net. Watched by Quinn Hughes. Passes near boards for Cooley. Settles the puck. Try to make a move away from Patterson. Lost it. It rolls to Kraus behind the net. He tried a centering pass blocked by Hughes. Kraus gets it again behind the net. Brings it to the left wing corner. Pushed to the boards by Hughes. Kraus protected the puck. Goes rink wide right point. Sean Dersey missed it. And it rolls back into the neutral zone. Canucks get a partial change. As Nick Bugstad brings it back in offside of the Vancouver line. 7-17 gone in the first period. No goals between the Canucks and the Coyotes thus far. And that was the first real sequence where Arizona had some zone time as they had numbers coming back through the neutral zone after Vancouver had a little bit of possession. And what happens after that? Arizona hems them in, but a good job by Niels Hoaglander coming back on the back check to take a chance away from Yusuf Valimaki. Canucks win the face off of their own line. Myers banks it right wing to center for Dakota Joshua, driving into the Coyotes zone. Tried to get around the defenseman, Sean Dersey, to the front of the net. Couldn't do so. Puck rolls left wing, and Garland's after it on the half wall, as is Joshua. Garland dumps it behind the net. Moser back to it. Hit into the end boards by Miller as he played it up the far side to Clayton Keller. Then to center for Nick Schmaltz, who clears it into the Canucks zone. Bugstad on the forecheck. Tripped up Garland. That'll be an Arizona penalty. And the Canucks will get their first power play of the game. 7.47 into the first with Nick Bugstad skating straight to the penalty box knowing that he was the guilty party on that sequence. Arizona minor penalty number 17, two minutes for tripping. He was frustrated on this play as Connor Garland has the angle on him. Nick Bukestad start, stops skating there and just ends up tying him up there with a little bit of a slash on the ankle. So that causes Connor Garland to fall in the corner. And if you're Nick Bukestad, you don't like that penalty call. A, it's in the offensive zone. You want to be aggressive but gives the Vancouver Canucks an excellent opportunity to get the first goal of the, goal, the game here. Canucks have scored three power play goals in the last two games. And we'll look to continue that streak. As they win a faceoff, Miller's stick broke off the draw, so he's got to go to the bench for a new one. Canucks will pass it around until he's back into the play. Hughes from the line. Carries down the right wing side. Miller back into the zone. Hughes feeds right point to Pedersen. Now to Hughes. Far boards. Rink wide to the near side for Connor Garland. Garland stick handling into the corner. Passes behind the net to Besser. Fed it back to Garland left wing, but it was out of his reach, and it's found instead by Alex Kerfoot, who clears it all the way down the ice. And there's no pressure on that play, and Brock Besser just ends up elevating the puck to Connor Garland. Not an easy pass to take. Rush play there by Brock Besser. Hughes leaves for Pedersen at his own line. Right wing to Garland. Into the Coyote zone. Drops far boards for Miller. Leaves for Pedersen on the wall. Now to Hughes of the line. Back to Miller. Top of the right circle. Cycles behind the net. Pedersen missed the puck. And the Coyotes get it all the way down the ice as Dylan Gunther found it in the near corner and fired it the full 200 feet. The Canucks get zone possession on both of the plays, but the accuracy not there on the passes, Batch. Urgency not there either thus far. As Pedersen goes right wing for Hironic. Into the Coyote zone. Drops it to Miller. He'll play it rink wide near side. Besser bats it deep. 
as it was stopped by a piece of the discarded stick that Miller broke off the draw. Now Miller right corner, centers for Hironic, plays it behind the net to Pedersen. Back to Miller, right wing half boards, feeds the line for Hughes, he missed the pass. And has to take it back to his own line with just over 30 seconds left in the power play. Hughes, quick pass for Hironic, left wing, got a shot right on. It was stopped by Ingram, who played the rebound loose, but the Coyotes can't clear. Hoaglander holds in right wing for Hironic. Feeds the line for Susie. Back to Hironic, left point, dumps it into the near corner. Hoaglander after it, can't find it. Hironic holds in again, left wing. To Hoaglander behind the net, rims it around to the far side. It missed Joshua Podkolzin and Susie and goes back into the Vancouver zone with just a few seconds left of the power play. Power play one and two looking pretty disjointed. Not a cohesive unit on this first power play. Susie left wing to center, dumps it in behind the Arizona net. Canucks are now 0 for 1 on the power play. Ilya McCann with the puck in the left corner. Goes behind the Coyote net. Try to wrap around far post. Held out by Connor Ingram. And Clayton Keller gets the puck. Flipping it out to center. McKayev stands up. Bugstad. Puck is dumped back in. Icing waved off. And Puck Polson goes after Kesselring on the forecheck. Hits him into the end boards. Valimaki got it free to Keller near side. Tried to flip it out of the zone. It does bounce over the blue line. But right to Pod Colson, Who leaves it his own line for Zadorov. Now to Teddy Bluger. Back to Zadorov in his own zone. We've just passed the midway mark. First period. No score. Canucks and the Coyotes. In the second of a three-game road trip for Vancouver. Teddy Bluger dumps it onto the end boards. Met by Garland right corner. Feeds the line for Ian Cole. He's up a drive. It's ripped wide of the net. Past the stick side of Ingram. Now the Coyotes have numbers the other way. Michelli to the Vancouver line. Drops into the slot for McBain. Rolling puck. He can't settle it. Zadorov clears it to the near boards. Garland's after it, and he'll lift it high in the air to center on the backhand to relieve the pressure. An excellent job by Mark Friedman as well. He was coming back as the third player for the Canucks. Arizona had a three-on-two, but gets in that lane and gets a stick in the way to just break up the play. It could have been a dangerous moment for Arizona. Sean Jersey behind his own net for the Coyotes. Banks it right wing to center. Liam O'Brien after it on the near board. Stripped to the puck by Pod Colson. He got it to Lafferty, and he leaves in his own zone for Tyler Myers. Myers near boards for Susie. Threw it up the left wing. Niels Oman gets it deep. But the Canucks are called offside of the Coyote blue line. 8.42 left in the first period. Still no score. Canucks and Coyotes on Alpine Credits. Canucks Hockey on Sportsnet 650 and the Sportsnet Radio Network. You deserve paint that stands up to life for life. With Seco Clean Surface at 30% off until April 3rd, create something to be proud of and stay proud of. Find a retailer near you at seco.ca. Seco, see color. The following is a message from Canada Action. We don't have to choose between sustainability or the economy. In fact, we can do both by exporting our lower emission liquefied natural gas to the world. We can reduce emissions while creating good-paying jobs at home for Indigenous and non-Indigenous communities alike. Demand is growing, and the world is asking for our energy. It's time to step up. Learn more at bclnghelps.ca. This is a team of record breakers. And a fifth point for Quinn Hughes. Prolific playmakers. He shoots, he scores. Risk takers. What a pass, what a play. Stadium Shakers. It's the sixth hat trick of his career. And legends in the making. This is your chance to make their story your story. Secure your Canucks season ticket memberships for next season, starting from just 10 payments of $239 at Canucks.com slash membership. History is now. Claim your stake in it. What does David L. Young of Dexter Realty have in common with an elite goal scorer? He gets pucks into the nets with precision, and he'll bring you home. Vancouver's David L. Young of Dexter Realty. Here, there, everywhere. Homes by David L. Young.com. Hey, this is Carter Garlo, and you're on the home of the Canucks. Sportsnet 650. You're listening to Alpine Credits Canucks Hockey on Sportsnet 650 and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Own your home. Alpine Credits can get your loan approved. Alpine Credits homeowners get approved. Visit alpinecredits.ca. 842 remaining in the first period. No score. The Canucks and the Coyotes in a low event game to say the least. Only four shots between the two teams combined. Canucks have three of them. The Coyotes have been credited with just one on Archer Shelovs. And no grade A opportunities as well. Definitely not a high danger chance out of any of those shots you mentioned. I'd be hard pressed to call any of them low danger chances too. Face off at the Coyote blue line, won by Pod Coles and back to Zadorov. Right side, Mark Friedman gains the line, drives it in wide of the net. It bounced off the end boards right back through the crease. 
And Connor Ingram looked like Michael Flatley, Lord of the Dances. He had to tiptoe out of the way of that puck so it didn't bounce off him and into the net. Todd Coles in right corner. Battling for the puck with Alex Kerfoot. Coyotes get it free. Valimaki played it up the boards. It's held in, though, and Zadorov gets it left point. Long wrist shot through traffic. Missed the target, but not by much. And it caroms off the right wing corner boards and out to center. A Michael Flatley reference was not on my bingo card, Batchel. I'll be honest. Hey, if the game's uneventful, we got to do it ourselves, exactly. right? Miller left wing to the Coyote line with speed. Driving wide on Kessel. Ring shot from a tough angle. Missed the net. And it deflects around to the near side wall. Lawson Krause with it for Arizona. Plays across the zone to Kesselring. Clears it to the Vancouver line. Dylan Gunther after it on the forecheck. Garland gets it free for Quinn Hughes deep in his own zone. Canucks out hitting the Coyotes 16-6 in the game. So there has been a physical element for Vancouver. And now here's Garland, the former Coyote, into the Arizona end on left wing. Carries near corner. Dances away from Josh Brown. Passes right wall to Dakota Joshua. Back to the line for Hironic. Left point Hughes with room. Drive right on. Kicked out by Ingram off the pad. And Kraus finds the rebound far side. Chipping it past Hironic and out to center. Hughes flips it back to his own line. Canucks nearly get caught with too many men as Hironic has to take the puck deep in his own zone while they complete a change. Hironic to Hughes. Left wing to center for Patterson. Banks it to the Coyote line. J.J. Moser back to the puck. Feeds middle of the ice for Nick Schmaltz. Schmaltz up the near side for Keller. Try to rink wide feet. Tip back into the zone. Now Sean Dersey clears to center on the back end. But Myers plays it loose. Hoaglander dumps it back in. And Schmaltz takes it behind his own net. Feeds up the near wall for Keller. They'll play it middle of the ice for Moser. Now to Schmaltz with speed. Right wing into the Vancouver zone. Dumps it behind the Canuck net. Susie back to it. Finds Hoaglander on the far boards. He'll settle a rolling puck and bank it off the wall into the Coyote end. Patterson on the four check. Dumps it to the end boards. Jersey's got it for the Coyotes. Reverses to the near side of the zone. For his defense partner, J.J. Moser, who bounces it out to center. And Schmaltz settles it at his own line. And play back into his own zone. For Sean Dersey, who takes it behind his own net. 6-10 left in this first period. No score. Canucks and Coyotes. Arizona trying to break out. Michelli at his own line, forced to play it back deep under pressure by Pod Colson. The late hit on Moser as he lifts it off the glass and out to center. Zadorov at his own line, drops near side for Ian Cole. Middle of the ice to Pod Colson, who gains center ice and dumps it in. Jersey in the near corner. Chased down by Bluger on the forecheck. Gets it to Moser behind the net. He's watched by Pod Colson far corner. Moser goes back to Jersey near side. Now ahead to Jack McBain. With speed to the Vancouver line, drops right wing. For Josh Doan, try to centering pass that was blocked, and Teddy Bluger gets it out to center again. Coyotes regrouping. Michelli, left wing for Doan. Plays it down the far boards. Shot from wide on the wall by Alex Kerfoot was stopped and held by Archer Shelovs. 525 left in the first. Still no score. Vancouver and Arizona. You're listening to Alpine Credits Canucks Hockey, streaming on the Sportsnet app and along the Sportsnet Radio Network. It's time for the BCHL Minute. The BC Hockey League recently added five teams from Alberta to bolster both the on-ice and off-ice product of the 62-year-old junior circuit. The league's commissioner, Stephen Cocker, explains why this decision was a no-brainer for the league. It kind of continues the model of what the BCHL is about, and that's developing college hockey players. I mean, these, these five teams coming in are are some of the top caliber teams from Alberta, very well established in their communities. And and we see it as as gonna be an instant benefit to our league on and off the ice. These programs like our existing 17 teams attract some of the top future NCAA college hockey players. So, you know, we thought it's it's definitely a natural fit. The BCHL is modern hockey. If you know your face-offs from your playoffs, you're ready to play now. If you've ever explained icing, you're ready to play now. If you know what PPG stands for, hint, it's power play goal. You're so ready for Play Now Sports, the official sports betting partner of the Vancouver Canucks. Get started with a $20 free bet at playnow.com slash radio. Conditions apply. Know your limit. Play within. Must be 19+. plus. Alpine Credits Canucks Hockey. Down the right wing, he shoots and scores! 
on the official home of the Canucks, Sportsnet 650 and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Don't miss out on the best show in town at a Vancouver Warriors lacrosse game. Lock in your seat at Rogers Arena for as little as $25 at tickets.vancouverwarriors.com and get your tickets for the Canucks online 50-50 draw. Go to canucks.com slash 50-50 to enter. Ticket sales close on Monday night. Must be 19 plus and located in BC at the time of purchase to play. Know your limit. Play within it. Canucks win a face-off in their own zone, but JT Miller under pressure flips it all the way down the ice and this will be icing against Vancouver. There's not many people in Mullet Arena. We know the number of attendees usually is capped out at 4,600, but a couple of notable people. Adam Hadwin, who lives in Arizona, PGA golfer, Canucks fan, is there. And former BC Van- native. Of course, yeah, Abbotsford, BC. And Eddie Lack, former Vancouver Canuck, is there. He's the uh, a volunteer coach with Arizona State University. Of course, shares a home here with the Arizona Coyotes. And a real church of the stars down there as well, right. if I'm not mistaken. I think he's going to try to sell Murph a home while he's down there. <laughs> Coyotes to center. Keller tips it into the Vancouver end. Heronic back to it behind the goal. Leaves near corner for Quinn Hughes, and he'll play it up the wall and out to center. Under five minutes left, first period. No score. The Canucks and the Coyotes. Valimaki at his own line. Near side for Bukestad. Goes ahead to Michael Kesselring, who spins back into his own zone under the watchful eye of Sam Lafferty. Kesselring taking time behind his own goal. Gives us a chance to remind you that Satyar Shah and Vic Nazar are coming up with Canucks Central at the intermission. We'll go to the guys for their thoughts on what has been a barn burner of a first period as soon as the opening 20 minutes are over. That's This is like a Dean Malenko match. Not high event. Technical. Very technical. <laughs> Shouts to anybody that gets that reference listening there as Patterson plays his... Plays a puck down with his hand rather to Neil Zoman. Hand pass against the Canucks in the offensive zone. The faceoff will come back in neutral ice. 4.09 remaining first period. No score of Vancouver and Arizona. And an apt reference on WrestleMania week. That's right. And, okay, listen. Last game, it was 4-1 at this point, which is not great for the Canucks. So if you're Rick Tockett, you're saying not much is going on. You've only allowed two shots. You've only allowed. It's a low event game. As a coach, you'd prefer a low event style of game rather than a high event, which was last game. You just got to start creating some offense. Of course, it's a back-to-back game as well. So sometimes getting started can take a little bit of a while here. Notable game on the out-of-town scoreboard in the race for the Pacific Division crown being played tonight between the Dallas Stars and Edmonton Oilers. And the Stars lead 1-0 after one. Radic Foxa with the lone goal of the game. So that's good news on the out-of-town scoreboard for Canuck fans right now as well as a puck was flipped out of play on the far wall and there'll be a face-off at center as a result. A couple of very good games tonight as well. Tampa Bay and Toronto earlier on where Tampa Bay won and Edmonton Dallas is should be even though they're winning one nothing right now we know the quick strike offense of Edmonton can change that real quick and if you haven't heard you're going to want to watch Sportsnet Central tonight for the highlights of the Rangers and the Devils a very eventful hockey game between those two rivals out east Ilya McKay with a puck in his own zone flips it up the far side of the line not out held in long shot for the left point was ripped wide of the net by Lawson Krause now, J.J. Moser can't hold in left point. He's got to take it back to his own line. Holding on to the puck. Feeds right wing for Dersey. Brought it into the Vancouver zone. Zadorov flipped it back to center. And Dersey goes middle of the ice for Kraus. Spins back to his own line. And the Coyotes will regroup in their own zone. Now Dersey ahead for Josh Doan. Into the Vancouver end. Right wing for Jack McBean. Pushed to the boards by Besser. Puck rolls to the near corner. Myers has it down low, protecting it on the backhand, and he'll flip it off the glass and down the ice, and it's icing against Vancouver, even though Hoaglander was chasing down Moser on the forecheck. 2.57 left in the first. No score. The Canucks and the Coyotes. And on the one side of things, you're right. Low event. Haven't given up many chances, if any chances at all, in this game, so that's a positive. But you are the Vancouver Canucks, and they are the Arizona Coyotes, so you want to impose more of your will on this game. Yeah, absolutely. And if you start looking at the game thus far, one high-danger chance in this game, it's gone to the Canucks, but you want to be able to create more. You want to be able to generate more, and the Canucks just can't get it going right now. Coyotes with a pack of the Vancouver zone. Michelli winding in the right wing corner. Feeds the line for Kessel Ring. Shot through traffic. Blocked in front by Susie. Gets it up the near side for Pedersen. Now to Niels Hoaglander, and he'll bank it off the glass to the Coyote line. 
Balamak in it behind his own net. Banks it up the near side. Michelli plays it off the boards to center, but Hughes takes it down and skates back in through the middle. Hughes to the left circle. Dumps it behind the goal. Hoaglander after it on the right wing. Hashmark battles it into the corner for Garland. He's tied up by Bukestad into the boards. And Nick Schmaltz skates away with it. Gives it away at his own line to Pedersen. Plays it back in for Garland. Mishandled it on the near side. Schmaltz gets it back. Tries a stretch pass. Looking to connect with Keller, who's attempting to sneak behind the Vancouver defense, but it's broken up, and Garland brings it back in on the left wing. Two minutes left, first period, no score. The Canucks and the Coyotes. Garland, top of the left circle. With time, no one pressuring him. He'll take it back to the blue line. Now skate downhill near side. Spins away from Keller. High slot. Joshua with a one-timer. Blocked in front. Rebound top of the crease. Miller can't get to it. Bukestad clears it to the near boards. Keller is hit by Joshua and can't get it out. Hughes holds in and throws it through the crease and out the far side. Aronik dumps it back in from the right point. Hughes meets it at the bottom of the left circle. Spins it behind the net for Garland. Garland knocked down by Bukestad below the goal line. Miller in to help out. Has the puck. Goes back to the left point for Quinn Hughes. Now to the right side for Philip Aronik. Long wrist shot. Deflicted and just missed past the glove side of Connor Ingram. Miller behind the net lays a cross check into the back of one of the Coyotes. Knocked him into the back of the net. And that'll be a Vancouver penalty, and the Coyotes will get their first power play of the game with 1.15 left in the first and still no score in the hockey game. A late flurry by the Vancouver Canucks, all started by Dakota Joshua moving up to the high slot and ends up taking a one-timer that is a dangerous play, but after that, JT Miller with a cross-check on Yusuf Valimaki behind the net. He's going to get called for that, but there was a, a sign of life in this game, finally, as the Canucks... JT Miller, Dakota Joshua, Connor Garland creating and having some success in the middle of the ice, which has been really a non-factor thus far. But unfortunately for Vancouver, they've got a penalty kill here as Arizona and their 14th ranked power play in the NHL try to get to work here. Coyotes have scored on the man advantage in three straight games. Going three for eight in that stretch and they win the faceoff. Sean Dersey, top of the point. Passes right side to Clayton Keller. Keller in the near circle. Back to Dersey, drive from the line, blocked by Bluger, but Keller holds in. Passes to the bottom of the left circle. Tight angle shot down low by Gunther, was held out by Shelox. Susie breaks it up behind his own net, clears it right point. Dersey can't hold into the blue line. It's knocked to center. Here's Teddy Bluger with a shorthanded break left wing. Bluger in front of Mikheyev. It's tipped to the goal, stopped by Ingram. Mikheyev got the rebound. Ingram stopped that too, and the Coyotes turn back to center. 40 seconds left in the period. Puck is tipped in behind the Vancouver net by Alex Kerfoot, but cleared all the way around the boards and back down the ice by Tyler Myers. And a great job by Teddy Bluger to make the play on the left-hand side and attacking down the left-hand side. And Niels Oman had an excellent chance as he reacted well to a bouncing puck, but couldn't beat Connor Ingram. Zadorov in his own zone with the puck. Lifts it left wing to center. Ten seconds left in the period. Ingram out of the goal, passed it through the slot with Joshua waiting there, but got it left wing to center for Michelli into the Vancouver zone. Centering pass, broken up and cleared by Patterson, and that'll do it for the first period. Only ten shots between the two teams. The Canucks had seven of them, but neither goaltender has been solved thus far as the game remains scoreless after one. There is a sign of life in this game, though late in the period, Teddy Bluger and Niels Oman create a chance Fortunately for them, they couldn't get a good angle, and Niels Oman was stopped in tight by Connor Ingram, but this game did speed up a little bit later on with about two or three minutes to go. Let's see what the Canucks can do in the second period. Time for Canucks Central at the intermission, brought to you by Play Now Sports. Know your face-off from your playoffs. You're ready to play now. Learn more at playnow.com slash radio. Let's join Satyar Shah and Bik Nazar. This is Canucks Central at the intermission on the official home of the Canucks. Sportsnet 650 and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Keller holds in. Passes to the bottom of the left circle. Tight angle shot down low by Gunther. Was held out by Shelox. Susie breaks it up behind his own net. Clears it right point. Jersey can't hold into the blue line. It's knocked to center. Here's Teddy Bluger with a shorthanded break left wing. Bluger in front of Mikheyev. It's tipped to the goal. Stop by Ingram. Mikheyev got the rebound. Ingram stopped that too. And the Coyotes turn back to center. 
fast Eddie Gregory's on it. That's the only real quality scoring chance the Canucks had in the first period. It came on the penalty kill, Teddy Bluger and Neil Zolman on a 2-1 on one chance. They didn't quite get the look they wanted, but as close as the Canucks came to scoring, and it's tied at zero through the first uh, period, and this is Canucks Central at the intermission, brought to you by Play Now Sports on Sportsnet 650 and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Satya Shaw with Vic Nazar. We are going to get to the betting odds for the game coming up in a little bit. The Canucks favored going into it. I would imagine they remain favored, despite the fact that it is scoreless through the first 20 minutes. Keep your thoughts coming in to our Dunbar Lumber text inbox, 650-650. We'll interact with you throughout this intermission. And uh, given the fact that there wasn't a lot happening uh, in the first period here, Vic, uh, for the Vancouver Canucks, um, or even the Arizona Coyotes for, for, Coyotes for that matter, how do we even grade that that first period, considering what happened in Vegas last night for Vancouver? Yeah, Look, part of it is because they're on a back-to-back. Are they completely uh, full of energy? But nevertheless, uh, a slow period the whole way for both teams. I'm okay with it to a certain degree because they are on the back-to-back, and it is playing to their identity, not really giving up anything. Nothing, yeah. I mean, the, the, there's what, one chance midway through the, the period that uh, uh, Arizona had. Not much of a look anyways. But Shelly skated into the middle of the ice at one point, but he was on his backhand, and he kind of had to retreat anyways. By and large, um, pretty fine. And it, it, it's just the one play where Cole backhands it up the wall on the right side, doesn't get out, and leads to a play where Seelovs uh, gets bumped into, and seam pass creates a dangerous moment that they can't even convert on. There's another pass later in the period that the the Coyotes try in the offensive zone where they don't convert on. And for the most part, that to me is a a fine road period for Vancouver. But you certainly want to see them get the first goal. The Canucks are firmly in control of this game. There's no doubt about it. The shots are 4-2. Attempts 13-7 in favor of Vancouver. The Canucks are spending almost uh, the majority of this game in the Arizona end. But like we mentioned, not a ton of quality scoring chances being generated. You know, we mentioned on the penalty kill that Blue Green Chance, you heard the call coming in, the best chance they had. Maybe five on five, their best opportunity came off the first shift of the game. Elias Patterson, um, and, yeah. and he tried to pass pass the opportunity off, and I think it's one of those situations where we want to see Patterson take it into his own hands a bit more, be more aggressive, and try to score a bit more, shoot the puck in dangerous areas. And listen, it's a decent chance, but it's an opportunity where maybe he can be the guy who's the aggressor, and, and he's still more deferential than you know taking charge of opportunities for himself. Well, it reminds me of a play a couple of games ago against the Anaheim Ducks on the power play where he takes a pass and he's near the middle of the ice Mm -hmm. and he just chooses to pass out wide. This one was at least moving the puck towards the net, but it's a backhand pass. It's rather weak. Now it's a bit of a scrambled play, but nevertheless, that's a chance for him to get maybe a backhand shot. Do you have enough time to bring that to the forehand, get a shot off? A little weak on that play, on a play that uh, some hard work by Nils Hoaglander sets it up. Yeah, and and the other real chance the Canucks had five on five came right before JT Miller took the cross-checking penalty on Valimaki. Uh, And there was Connor Garland really being the straw that stirs the drink on that shift, uh, creating some space for himself along the half wall, getting the puck over to Dakota Joshua, got a good shot off, created rebound opportunity. Pretty basic stuff, but those are the two shifts offensively that stood out to me. The first one by Patterson and then Connor Garland right before the JT Miller penalty and that line generating a bit of pressure. Well, for Garland, not forcing anything. Yeah. He wins the puck or has the puck along the wall and doesn't force anything, doesn't shoot it down low too early, Mm -hmm. looks for opportunities that might be there and just waits and waits and waits and no Coyote really put any pressure on him. Eventually, Dakota Joshua, good for him to find a little soft spot at the top of the zone, gets a one-timer off. And actually, what I really love with this Garland play too, not passive, goes right into the slot after the pass, and blow someone up. I, I didn't see who it was. Bad camera angle and all in uh, Arizona. We'll but... get to that in a couple minutes. <laughs> and just blows up a guy in the slot, knocked him over. And there's Connor Garland being feisty in key areas of the ice. And, of course, uh, Miller eventually takes the penalty, uh, nullifying that whole sequence. But it was a really strong sequence for that line. Uh, the Canucks' best chance. Yeah, it was the best opportunity they had uh, at that point, stage in the game. Uh, two of the best opportunities. And, you know, let's get through uh, the penalties, too. The Vancouver Canucks end up getting on the power play. Um, it, it was Bukestad tripping Garland. And Garland, you know what? Like, he's drawn a few penalties in recent games. He drew a couple the other game. Uh, draws one here tonight. But 
The power play looked very abysmal, mm -hmm. and uh, some would say it was the worst power play of the season. We've seen some bad power <laughs> plays, but they generated next to nothing on the man advantage. Uh, Kevin from Calgary texting in, power play, it's a joke. Gain the zone, then go flat-footed. No intensity. Miller breaks his stick, and Hughes wakes up until the time Miller re-enters the zone again, and he's back to being flat-footed. Petey's acting like the puck is a grenade, and that is Kevin from Calgary. Yeah, it was... Uh, awful opening power play and you know i think the worst part was the pass by brock besser to Connor Connor garland, garland. Yeah. It, it created the zone exit for arizona yeah. and then the bad entry this power play is is not even sometimes showing that they have the solution and, and they're so they've been so mechanical the coach the word the coaches use on the power play when they were getting set up but they're so predictable when it comes to their entries as well and they consistently try to set up the same play and and it's fine. The draw pass works. There's a reason every single team uses it. There's there isn't a single power play in the National Hockey League that does not use the draw pass to some extent. But when they're giving you a lane to walk in, just walk in. And and there's so often with this power play where they're so fixated on either setting up an opportunity off a set play or so fixated on getting the proper break in that they're not taking what's in front of them. And I think that's been the most frustrating part of it. And it's hard to look at it and say, well, these guys are National Hockey League players. They should be able to figure it out. But sometimes the power plays get into these malaises. They get into these ruts. And the Canucks are clearly in a rut right now in their man advantage because the things that should be natural and given to them, they're just not taking them. And they're just so caught up in, in trying to do something a specific way that they're not attacking the game where it's available to them. Yeah, and what's frustrating about that is who's going to be the one that takes ownership of it? Because is it Queen Hughes? Is it JT Miller? It's not Brock Besser because he's there to be the finisher of it, and he doesn't really put himself in a spot where he's going to manipulate defenders. He's net front. He's going to convert chances, and maybe he pops into the bumper. Well, and Elias Pettersson doesn't really feature in a playmaking role on the power play. I think the issue here is, and, and Garland does a lot of good things, but it's very clear that he gets no respect from penalty killers. Like, they give him the shot. They give him a lot of space. Like, they're not, like the PKers are not afraid of Connor Garland. When you watch how PKs are approaching the Canucks, but the issue that compounds it is Pettersson on the opposite side of the ice is a complete non-factor and non-threat right now, too. So if you have two out of your five players on the man advantage not providing much of a goal-scoring threat, like, how are you going to score? And I think that's kind of the problem here right now. It's You don't have enough guys on a five-man unit that are enough of a goal-scoring threat for you to feel dangerous. Like, Quinn Hughes scores a few goals, but we're talking about a guy who has 15 goals in the season. He can't be one of your primary goal-scoring threats on the man advantage. He's your setup guy. So all of a sudden, you're talking about Besser and JT Miller. And then Besser doesn't handle the puck a ton. So it becomes JT Miller's more of a playmaker. You see where the problem is as I go through all these issues mm -hmm. here. They need, it all kind of comes back to Pedersen again. They need him to be a threat, a threat individually as far as a goal scorer is. Also, just for overall offensive production, just looking at the box score right now, Canucks end up having seven shots on goal. Here's, here are your shooters so far. Philip Peronik, Nils Hoaglander, Quinn Hughes, Teddy Bluger, Dakota Joshua, Nils Oman, and Nikita Zadorov. Some D-man in there, and also of the nine attempts that didn't go on goal, three are coming from Carson Soucy, and the other two are coming from, uh, or sorry, two more are coming from Ian Cole and Nikita Zadorov. A lot of D-men. A lot of D-men. Yeah. And, you know, we've talked about broken plays. You know, is it best to just play the game and, and create broken plays out of it, or are you playing for broken plays? Well, right and now it seems like they're playing for broken plays. That's where I, like, I, I have my frustrations at times of, but, but of doing that. I understand the numbers. I understand the value in it. I understand that's what they're trying to do. But in a night like tonight where you can see that there might be some space, you can try to create a little bit more, it feels like relegating to point shots. Yeah, but I also think part of it is how often are you seeing the players be able to cycle it down low and be able to create the low to high play? And part of that is you hear a coach talk a lot about we need guys to get inside more, guys mm -hmm. to get deeper, the guys to battle a bit more. And we're not seeing that from the Canucks right now either. So I think it's a, a two-pronged issue here because if they were able to get deeper and create a, more of a forecheck and get those low high plays going, well, the defenders wouldn't be shooting the puck as much if those plays aren't available to you and you you keep at getting the puck up to your point the defensemen are going to shoot it so i think it's i don't know if this is what they're trying to generate but it's more about what they're settling for to me yeah certainly uh 650 650 into the dunbar lumber text message inbox i'll get to the betting odds in just a moment here uh someone wanted to ask though uh 
Was that interference on the end? I imagine they're talking about the Bluger play. Yeah, it looked to me like he was interfered with. Um, he was still able to make the play. He still made the play. But to me, like on, on a two-on-one where he's mm-hmm. going with space, he, with speed, he was interfered with. To me, that should have been a penalty call. They didn't call it, obviously. And, you know, the Canucks had a good opportunity. Olan wasn't able to convert on it. But, yeah, I, I, I thought that should have been interference, too, on that play. And, and a lot of commentary of... This is what we thought Talk at Hockey would be like. Jay from North Delta, uh, among others, texting that in. Uh, Talk at Hockey, maybe. Uh, hey, look, you have an identity, and you're succeeding in it, lowering the events in this game. Uh, but we'll see if they can actually turn this into double uh, Ws. Yeah, I mean, I don't think, honestly, I don't think that this is Talk at Hockey, so to speak, because I bet you if you ask him, he's going to talk more about post game. We need guys to get inside more. Which to me is like there's the, the team settling for easy stuff. I don't think talk at hockey is about settling for easy stuff. It's about driving, playing, getting in inside, and, and creating some real opportunities. But let's take a look at the betting odds after the first intermission. And the first intermission betting odds are brought to you by Playing Out Sports, the official sports betting partner of the Vancouver Canucks. And coming into the game, the Canucks were favored on the money line, and it has not changed at all, really. The Canucks came in at 1.71 on the money line. Now they're at 1.77. So it's, it's changed slightly, and that means a $10 bet on the Canucks live money line has a potential payout of $17.70, and a $10 bet on the Coyotes live money line has a total potential payout of twenty dollars, so uh, a pretty even, almost a pick 'em between the Vancouver Canucks and Arizona Coyotes, and not a, not a ton separating them uh, after the first intermission, after the first period as well. The Canucks need to do a lot better in the second to take the lead. Uh, it's Satya Shaw with Bick Nazar. You've been listening to Canucks Central at the intermission, brought to you by Play Now Sports. You're ready to play now. Get a twenty dollars free bet at PlayNow.com/radio. It must be nineteen plus to play. Conditions apply. Now, before we hit the break, real quick, Bick, uh, what else are the people saying on the text inbox? Last thought from Karin in North Delta. Even though Colson's only had a point since joining the lineup, it just looks like he's making better reads, playing more comfortably as he goes. Won't be the biggest point producer, but it's nice to see that confidence slowly progressing despite being such on such a limited role. Yeah, we'll see if uh, he finally gets his first goal, if the connection can break through on the Coyotes as well coming up in the second period. It's Satin Big. We'll be back during the second intermission. Batch and Randeep have your second period call coming up next in the home of your Canucks, Sports in the 650 and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Your business is more than just numbers. It's years of hard work, dreams, and passion. But in the midst of the hustle, have you taken the time to understand its true worth? Crow's trusted advisors can help. With global expertise across a wide variety of industries, let Crow uncover the real value of your business. Redefine your company's success. Visit crowmackay.ca to learn more. Crow. Smart decisions. Lasting value. In today's modern world, there are still a few time-honored traditions in one's life. Things that are a rite of passage. Your grandfather would have experienced this. And certainly, your father was there. And now, it's your turn for a legendary time. Pre-game, post-game, even during the game. The number five orange. Shop a top-of-the-line selection of ice-cold beer, incredible wine, and flavor-packed ciders. Plus, a power play of spirits for any level of team spirit. Angry Otter Liquor has 31 premium shopping locations across BC. Here for you all season long, and of course, into the playoffs. Score big with Angry Otter Liquor and celebrate every win with the perfect drink. You don't have to be a member to shop with Angry Otter Liquor, but it pays to be one. Details at angryotterliquor.crs. Alpine News Network is here live with one of our superheroes. I just helped Tom with a business loan. He needed to soup up his mechanic shop. Not to brag, but I once modified a car to match my ultra speed. It went so fast, it broke the speed of sound. At least no one was inside. I hope no one was inside. I guess I'll just stick to approving business loans. Own your home? Need a loan? Alpine Credits can help. Alpine Credits, where homeowners get approved. Make Taco Tuesday twice as fast. Save over 25% on the KitchenAid 13 Cup Food Processor, the Today Showstopper on April 7th at TSC. All blades and attachments can be stored inside the bowl for quick and easy cleanups. Save over 25% on the KitchenAid 13 Cup Food Processor, the best offer of the day on April 7th at TSC. Shop exciting offers every day at tsc.ca. 
Taxi! Yellow Cab Vancouver is your go-to for a safe and affordable ride anytime. Secure your ride back by downloading the all-new Yellow Cab app and book your prepaid rides. And right now, you can use promo code 2024YELLOW to receive 10% off your next trip. That's promo code 2024YELLOW. Thanks, bud. Download the Yellow Cab Vancouver app on iOS or Android and book your ride today. Or visit yellowcabonline.com. That's yellowcabonline.com. Waypoint Insurance has been here for over 150 years, seeking and sourcing ways to fill your home with safety, comfort, and peace of mind. They travel the same roads, trek the same trails, and make their way through life's adventures, setting their sights on a life worth living. Because this is Waypoint's home, their playground, their livelihood. So go explore. From business to home to auto to personal insurance, Waypoint has your back. Waypoint Insurance, together protecting what you love. Visit waypoint.ca. Tuesday. This is the Million Dollar Season! Canada's Got Talent is back. It's on. With the biggest season yet, this year's winner will receive a life-changing $1 million. The largest prize in Canadian TV history. All thanks to Rogers. This is the biggest season on the biggest show in Got Talent history. Canada's Got Talent. The Million Dollar Season. All new Tuesday, 8, 7 central on City TV or streaming on City TV+. Plus. Hey, this is Patrick Demko. CC with a one timer. Good save by Demko down low. Rebound chance for Amanda Kane. Demko stopped that too. And you're on the home of the Canucks, Sportsnet Radio Network. Welcome back, Brendan Bachelor and Randy Janda with you. No score between the Canucks and the Coyotes after one, and we'll get to the second period momentarily. Thanks for joining us along the Sportsnet Radio Network tonight. Whether you're in Terrace, the Thompson Okanagan, or wherever you're tuning in, we appreciate you spending your evening with us. Let us know where you're listening from. You can reach me at Batch Hockey. He is at Randy Janda. Our flagship station is at Sportsnet 650. You can find those handles on Instagram, TikTok, and the social media platform formerly known as Twitter. And Sadiq has already written in, letting us know that he's listening to us while watching the game at Mullet Arena. One of the 4,600 people in attendance, so uh, a lot of Canucks fans there. But also looking at the second period here, Batch, the Canucks had a, a good period defensively in that first period. They didn't give Arizona anything, nothing in front of the net. But offensively, you got to find ways to do two things. A, get to the front of the net, get to those high danger areas. And B, when you get a, a chance to shoot at the net, you got to hit the net. There was three or four opportunities for Vancouver, but they missed the net. Coyotes still have time left on the power play here to begin the second period. Canucks in white going from left to right. The Coyotes in black skating from right to left. And Sean Dersey brings it to center. Coyotes dump it in behind the Vancouver net. Shilov's out of the goal. Played it far corner to Zadorov, and he's able to clear it the full 200 feet. 20 seconds left in the Coyote power play. Clayton Keller with the puck behind his own net. Skates to center. Drops it to his own line for Nick Schmaltz. Schmaltz left wing for Michelli. Across the Vancouver line. Poke checked by Mikheyev. Puck rolls free to Dersey. Dumps it behind the net. Susie back to it on the end boards. Cleared it up the near side. They turn it over. Great chance for Keller. Right circle off a tremendous centering feed from Michelli. Keller was wide open but missed the net. Canucks are back to even strength and they've got the puck back. That might be the first real grade A scoring chance for either team in this game as Vancouver ices the puck. One minute into the second period, the game remains scoreless. And going back to that play, you got to play with emphasis. You got to play with purpose. On that play, Carson Soucy just kind of pokes the puck forward, doesn't have a chance to clear it properly. And what happens? Michelli with a great feed. And Clayton Keller all by himself on the right hand side. 32 goals this season. You bet on him to get that one as well. Nine goals in the last 10 games. Just ends up missing the net there. Miller wins the faceoff in his own zone near corner for Tyler Myers. Took a hit from Jack McBain as he tried to clear the zone. It rolls far corner for Susie, tips it to center, and Elias Pedersen to the red line dumps it in. Miller first to it right side. It front for Pedersen missed the pass in the slot. It hopped over his stick. McBain on the far side can't clear. Pedersen holds in for Miller left corner. Back to Pedersen down low. Not sure if this is a new look line or just a line that Talk gets thrown out here off the penalty kill. We'll follow along to see if he has indeed blended his lines as the Coyotes get it to center. And it's whistled, I believe, and deflected into the Vancouver bench. 133 into the second scoreless game. Canucks and Coyotes. It's a strategy that Rick Tockett employs. Sometimes you have to throw out some looks there that are a little different. And Pedersen, Garland, and Miller is one that we haven't necessarily seen. It's uh, not quite the lotto line, but Connor Garland has act acted like a spark plug for this lineup for going back for about 
a month, you could say. So why not? The first period, they weren't able to break through the middle. They weren't able to really get to the, the center of the ice and create high quality opportunities. But maybe that new trio can help. Canucks dump it into the Coyotes zone. Gunther back to it. Played it behind his own net. Dermott clears it around the near side. Found by Hoaglander. Tried a centering pass that Neil Zoman missed. And Logan Cooley's got it far side in his own end. Cooley leaves on the boards for Josh Brown. He passes left wing to center. Cooley mishandled the puck. Tipped it to the Canuck line. Heronic tries to clear it. Deflects high off the glass to Besser. But Kraus steals it from him for Cooley. Top of the left circle. Winding on the boards. Pushed to the wall by Oma. Dermott in to help out. Dumps it behind the net for Kraus. He rims it back to the right point. Held in by Moser. Played it down the wall only as far as Hughes. Nice pass middle of the ice to center for Brock Besser. Makes a move to gain the red line. Goes back to Hughes. Into the Coyotes zone. Around O'Brien with a tight angle. Shot held out of the post by Connor Ingram. And he gets the whistle too. With Quinn Hughes darting up the left wing. Trying to create a chance to give the Canucks the lead, but Connor Ingram made the save and held on. And this was a smooth passing play as Quinn Hughes makes the pass to Brock Besser in the neutral zone and a little give and go. Besser feeds Quinn Hughes coming down the left wing who ends up beating Liam O'Brien and tries for some trickery. And he almost snuck it in too, Nearly did. He? Nearly did. It was a, a good save in the end by Connor Ingram who's smiling now, but at that time certainly looked worried as Quinn Hughes attacking from the left-hand side. Tell me if you've heard that before. Been very aggressive coming down that wing. Connor Ingram's second career meeting against the Canucks. He was the goaltender of record in the 2-1 loss for Arizona against Vancouver back on January 18th. Made 24 saves in that game and gave up both Vancouver goals. Todd Colson and Kerfoot on the faceoff of the Coyote zone. Scrambled draw goes to Michael Carconi. And he skates left wing to center. Passes right side for Alex Kerfoot. Into the Vancouver zone. Kerfoot with room. Top of the right circle. Tried a shot that was blocked high and wide of the net. Bounces to the side of the goal. Mark Friedman gets it behind the net and plays it around to the near side for Pod Colson. He'll reverse it back around the zone. Far wall but can't get it out. J.J. Moser holds in right side. Tried a low shot. Rolled wide of the net. Held into the left point by Jersey. He's knocked down by Pod Colson. Played it free to Carconi. Spinning away from Pod Colson to the blue line. Try to dump it back right point for Moser, but it rolls out to center. McKayev knocks it free. He's got a chance left wing. Ilya McKayev to the Coyote. Gold takes to the backhand. He's stopped down low by Ingram. Good save with the left pad. Now Pod Colson behind the Arizona net. Feeds right point for Myers. Long wrist shot. Sails wide of the target. Liam O'Brien after it far side. Can't clear past Ian Cole. Centers for Carconi. He couldn't clear the zone. Canucks get it back deep. McKayev cycles down low to Miller. Passes behind the net to Garland. Garland on the end boards. Plays at left point for Ian Cole. Cole fires it deep again. Garland spins away from a check left corner. Cutting out front. Tried a shot. Couldn't get it to go. And Miller's got it down low. JT Miller to the line for Ian Cole. One time snapshot blocked in front. Found by Kerfoot on the near side. And he'll lift it into the Vancouver zone with Tyler Myers retreating to the puck. Meyer behind his own net. Plays far corner for Ian Cole. He'll flip it high in the air to the Coyote line. And Kesselring has it. Plays it near boards for Yusuf Alamaki. Alamaki centers for Nick Bukestad. Left wing to the Canuck line. Poke checked by Myers. And he'll turn back off ice for Patterson right wing. Elias Patterson fires it in on Connor Ingram. Turned it to the far corner. Garland's got it down low. Spinning away from Kesselring. Bukestad knocked it free. Patterson missed it behind the net. Bukestad in the near corner. Dumped it back behind the goal to hit the referee. Bounced through the crease. And Ingram had to clear it out of the blue paint. Now it's stolen by Besser in tight with a wrist shot going to the goal. He was stopped by Ingram as Bukestad knocked him down on the back check and the Coyotes get it out to the Vancouver line. Quinn Hughes in his own end. Spins away from Clayton Keller. Passes to center for Elias Patterson. Into the Arizona end. Patterson drops to Besser. Right circle. Threw it to the goal. Hoaglander was going to the net but couldn't tip it on target. Heronic with it at center. Plays it into space right wing. Besser after it into the Coyote zone again. Kesselring will take it behind his own net. Chased out the far side by Besser. Michael Kesselring, left wing to center. Matias Michelli settles it on the back end at the Canuck blue line and dumps it behind the Vancouver net. And some jump from the Pedersen Hoaglander Besser line. Brock Besser, just an excellent stick lift of Michael Kesselring to create an opportunity on that last shift. Heronic flips it out to center. It's knocked back to the Vancouver line. Neil Zoman leaves for Quinn Hughes in the defensive end. Hughes. Bank pass left wing to center. Oman dumps it in. He'll chase down Travis Dermott on the forecheck. 
Hits him into the corner boards. Dermott protected the puck. Gets it high off the glass to the blue line. Bouncing puck just held in nicely by Susie. Plays it back to the corner. Oma gets it free to Lafferty behind the net. Pinned to the wall by Josh Brown. McKayev in to help out. Gets it left wing. Back to the point for Susie. Long range wrist shot. Hit a skate in front of the net. Comes back to Susie again. Doesn't have a lane. Passes left wing for Oma. Threw it to the goal from a tough angle. It sailed wide into the right corner. Friedman gets it deep for McKayev on the boards. Tied up by Dermott along the wall. Now the right wing hash marks. Lafferty able to get it free back to the line, but it got past Mark Friedman and out to center. Six minutes gone, second period. No score, Canucks and Coyotes. Arizona has yet to register a shot in this second period. Vancouver with six in the middle frame. Mark Friedman, right wing to center. Dumps it behind the Coyote net. Miller gets it right corner, receiving a pass from Joshua. Dropped to Garland, right circle. Quick shot right on. Ingram made the save. Now Joshua left wing. Back to the line for Zadorov. Long wrist shot through traffic. Was deflected and goes into the mesh and out of play. 6.22 elapsed in the second period. Still no score. The Canucks and the Coyotes on Alpine Credits Canucks Hockey on Sportsnet 650 in the Sportsnet Radio Network. Have you boys been studying like I told you? Yes, Fiona. We're ready to answer all your questions. If I were a customer looking at engagement rings with a half-carat created center diamond, how many could you show me for less than $2,000? 321. And more than 20 of those are less than $1,500. With a half-carat center? With a half-carat center. Now I am a customer who wants lots of other diamonds surrounding the center and maybe some on the other sides of the ring. You can choose from 424 rings priced between between $2,000 and $24.99. Good, Michael. Your customers deserve accurate and immediate answers to their questions. I agree, Fiona. Carl, I'm a customer who wants something really opulent, a ring with so many diamonds that it reflects an entire galaxy of light. Fiona, we can show you 882 rings at prices above $2,500. And all of these rings include the center diamond? Yes, ma'am. You've done good work, boys. Spence. <laughs> Located in Vancouver in Langley. Omni Television is once again awarding scholarships to eligible students pursuing a career in third language journalism. Up to 10 scholarships will be available at the bachelor's degree, master's degree, or diploma level program. Applicants must have Canadian citizenship or permanent residency status in Canada as of the application deadline of May 15th. Omni is home to a variety of locally produced current affairs programs and daily national newscast broadcasts in six languages. To learn more, visit omnitv.ca slash Scholarships. Hey, this is JT Miller, and you're on the home of the Canucks. Sportsnet 650. 622 elapsed in the second period. There's no score between the Vancouver Canucks and the Arizona Coyotes. Enjoy a good selly? You're ready to play now. Get your $20 free bet at playnow.com slash radio. Must be 19 plus to play. Conditions apply. Canucks starting to generate some more chances. Good looks. For Connor Garland and Brock Besser just before the break. Now they win a face off of the Coyote zone. Shot by Myers. Rebound loose in the crease. Pod Colson trying to dig it home. It's still loose. Underneath his skates, he can't get his stick on it. And now Lawson Krause has it free and passes to center for Logan Cooley. Cooley, right wing to the Vancouver line. Stops top of the circle. Spins away from Mikheyev down the boards. Into the corner. Then goes back up the wall. To the line for Moser. Try to pass to the back door. Out of the reach of Jersey. He'll take it left wing at the hash marks. Back to the point for Dylan Gunther. Lost the puck to Pod Colson. But the whistle sounds as the Canucks touch the puck. It's because the Arizona net was off its moorings behind the play. And we'll have a face-off coming up. Teddy Bluger with the face-off win. Tyler Myers gets the puck on net. And then Vasily Pod Colson battling for the rebound. And Dylan Gunther, I thought, could have been called for holding or a bear hug. He's trying to put a sleeper hold in. It there. was, yeah. It was a Dean Malenko special on that one. And Dylan Gunther should have got a penalty on that play as there was a good battle. And Pod Colson has body position, just cannot get to the puck because Gunther's got him in a bear hug. We've had more Dean Malenko references than goals thus far in this game. Still no score, Cox right. and Coyotes. I'll stop. Well, we got to <laughs> diversify our wrestling references if we have them. Anderson, been that type of game, Batch. It has, <laughs> absolutely. Canucks out shooting the Coyotes 15 to 3. And Pedersen will take the draw opposite Schmaltz in his own zone. Schmaltz wins it back, but Hoaglander jumps forward off the faceoff, and here he goes, left wing to the Coyote line. Hoaglander pushed for the boards by Kesselring, dumped it behind the net. Valimaki tied up by Besser on the end boards. 
Hoaglander and Pedersen trying to dig it free. Pedersen gets it out front in the crease, trying to dig it home. Played it loose to Hoaglander, couldn't get a shot away. It's bouncing around in the slot in the Arizona end, and now Clayton Keller carries to center with speed. Keller to the Vancouver line. Right wing pass for Bukestad, threw it to the goal. It was kicked out by Shilovs to the near board. Schmaltz feeds the line. Valimaki with a one-time drive. Shilovs makes the save and gets the whistle as Keller, Heronik, and Bukestad get into it in front of the Vancouver net, and Quinn Hughes joins the shoving match as well. Nick Bukestad trying to get his team involved here. He's been a kind of involved in a couple of these scrums in this game, but the Vancouver Canucks doing a much better job of getting to the front of the net. They're getting pucks through, which is something they had trouble with in the first period. But on top of that, when the rebound is there, they're attacking that zone. Elias Pettersson, Niels Hoaglander nearly find an opportunity to get a goal in front of Connor Ingram. Like the Vasily Pod, Coles and Chance couldn't quite get there, but they're at least teasing. And now shots in, on goal in this period, eight for Vancouver. And Arizona has two. They finally got a couple of shots in this period. Shalov's having a challenging evening, I'm sure. He's only faced five shots in this game. And it took nearly eight minutes before he faced any in this second period. And those can be challenging games for goaltenders, especially a goaltender as inexperienced at the NHL level as Archer Shilovs playing his seventh career game tonight. And that's the mental side. How do you remain focused when a lot of the puck is on the other side of the ice? And even when it is in your own zone, it's on the periphery. You're not really having a chance to, to be engaged and, and see any of the puck. Canucks clear the puck to center. Dermott at his own line goes near side for Matias Michelli. Backhand pass to Josh Dome. Left wing for Jack McBain. Near circle into the Vancouver zone. Makes a move into the slot. Try to backhand shot blocked by Zadorov, who got down on one knee to get in front of that one. And Connor Garland tries to clear the zone. Held in by Dome on the right side. Garland strips him of the puck. And Zadorov gets it instead. Zadorov can't clear. Dome holds in again right side. Try to centering pass. Deflected away from McBain. And now Dakota Joshua on the third attempt is able to clear it out to center ice. Sean Jersey with a stretch pass. Tipped into the Vancouver zone. Michelli goes near boards for Kerfoot. Now to the left corner for Liam O'Brien. Dumped it behind the Vancouver net. And Teddy Bluger has it for the Canucks. He's going to flip it high in the air to the red line. And Pod Colson chases it down at the Coyotes' blue line but can't control. Now Moser missed a pass. Pod Colson holds in. Into the high slot for McCann to the net. Side of the goal. Bluger fanned on a one-time tap-in chance. It hit the outside of the net. And then Connor Ingram covers up and gets the whistle. 8.32 into the second period. No score. Vancouver and Arizona. And Teddy Bluger cannot believe he couldn't cash in. He could not end up getting enough of that puck. It looked like it hit the heel of his stick. But Ilya Mikheyev and Vasily Podkolzin are having a very strong second period here. Mikheyev had an opportunity earlier on where he created a turnover at the defensive blue line. Went back the other way to create a chance. And here Vasily Podkolzin and Mikheyev on the forecheck create that turnover and an excellent opportunity for Bluger. Offensive zone draw, though, for the Canucks. Bluger, McKayev, and Lafferty out there, so a hybrid line here. Protect your Coyotes win the faceoff. It's flipped all the way down, and it'll be icing against... Arizona Sonic 1049 is Vancouver's new alternative radio station. If you love legends like Foo Fighters and Green Day, along with discovering all new sounds, then welcome to the new alternative Sonic 1049. Vasily Pod Coles in two assists in 13 games this season in the NHL. But as games go on, you're starting to see him become more comfortable. And I know that last game wasn't great, but it wasn't for the entire Canucks team. It wasn't only Vasily Pod Coles. In. Face off one right to Connor Ingram in the Arizona crease, and he covers up and gets the whistle. 8.41, gone second period. Shots 14-5 to five in favor of the Canucks, but there are no goals yet. And there's been a few opportunities off faceoffs as Arizona is one of the worst teams in the NHL on the draw. None of their centermen are above 50%, which Vancouver's got all of their regular centermen are, when Elias Lindholm's playing, are above 50%. Coyotes win this face-off, though. Curse of the commentator. Josh Brown tried to clear the zone. It deflected out of play, and they'll drop it in again in the Arizona. And by the way, of all of the superstitions and commentators' curse and, you know, saying certain words you're not supposed to say, the one that I actually believe in is the face-off line. But we'll talk about that in a moment because the Coyotes are going to the penalty kill here as that puck is ruled to have been shot straight out of play by Josh Brown. So what you're telling me is they won the faceoff, but they end up losing in the end because Josh Brown 
takes the delay a game penalty here. This is an Arizona team that takes about 11 minutes of penalties per game, which is amongst the worst in the NHL. And they've taken their second one here. The Canucks on that first power play did not look confident. Let's see if they can get better here. Face off to the right of Connor Ingram in the Coyotes zone. Eventually won by Arizona, and Alex Kerfoot clears it all the way down the ice. So that's what I'm trying to say it is that there was no you can, commentator's curse. I was going to say, wasn't. you can take credit for the fact that Vancouver's on the power play now. That's You're it. welcome. You're Hughes welcome. with a drop pass at his own line, broken up by Kerfoot, who stole it from Pedersen. Passes into the slot. Moser missed it, but tipped it deep, and Connor Garland has it near side. And again, just too casual from this Vancouver man advantage. Hughes with a stretch pass. Here's Miller in behind. Shot right on. Stopped by Ingram. Miller gets it back, goes left side for Hughes. I think JT Miller had more time than he realized to go to the net. Just released the shot quickly. Now passes through the slot to Pedersen, left circle. Back to Hughes of the line. Right side Miller into the bumper for Besser. Shot on goal. Stopped by Ingram. Rebound for Garland. Gets it to Pedersen. Back to Hughes. High slot. Settles a rolling puck. Again to Pedersen, left side. Rink wide pass to Miller. Top of the right circle. Back to Hughes of the line. Hughes with a shot through traffic. He scores! Special teams, special plays, special players. Quinn Hughes had two goals last night against the Golden Knights, and he gets the Canucks on the board in Arizona. It's one to nothing. And that is his 16th goal of the season and his 85th point of the season as the Canucks set up looking dangerous on the power play after a JT Miller chance all alone. But Quinn Hughes ends up getting the puck from JT Miller and moves to the right-hand side, gets the shot through, and a credit to a couple of the Canucks, Brock Besser in the slot, showing a little bit of a deflection, doesn't get it, but still is in the lane. And Connor Garland right in front of Connor Ingram as the Arizona Coyotes goaltender had no chance to see that. I don't know if Garland's going to get an assist on that one, but he should. It's one nothing Vancouver. The goal comes at 9.43 of the second period on the power play, and the time of the goal is brought to you by Crow, your trusted advisors for 55 years. Learn more at crowmackay.ca. Hughes 16th of the season with assist to Miller and Patterson. And the Canucks draw first blood, albeit later into the game than normal for them. And they now have scored the first goal in a game for the 50th time this season. And they're headed back to the power play as we've got a penalty here on the ensuing play. 9.45 left in the second. It's Vancouver 1 and Arizona nothing on Alpine Credits Canucks Hockey. Streaming on the Sportsnet app and along the Sportsnet radio network. Navigating the seas of business? The waves can be unpredictable and overwhelming. Stay on course with Crow's trusted advisors. From startups to seasoned enterprises, Crow offers advice that protects and strategies that succeed. Because every smart decision begins with expert advice. Visit crowmackay.ca to learn more. Crow. Smart decisions. Lasting value. Tuesday. This is the million dollar season. Canada's Got Talent is back. It's on. With the biggest season yet, this year's winner will receive a life-changing $1 million. The largest prize in Canadian TV history, all thanks to Rogers. This is the biggest season on the biggest show in Got Talent history. Canada's Got Talent, the million-dollar season, all new Tuesday, 8, 7 central on City TV or streaming on City TV+. Plus. Waypoint Insurance has been here for over 150 years, seeking and sourcing ways to fill your home with safety, comfort, and peace of mind. They travel the same roads, trek the same trails, and make their way through life's adventures, setting their sights on a life worth living. Because this is Waypoint's home, their playground, their livelihood. So go explore. From business to home to auto to personal insurance, Waypoint has your back. Waypoint Insurance, together protecting what you love. Visit waypoint.ca. Hey, this is Connor Garland. It's 4-0 Canucks with 6.41 left in the second. And you're on the home of the Canucks. Sportsnet Radio Network. You're listening to Alpine Credits Canucks Hockey on Sportsnet 650 and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Own your home. Alpine Credits can get your loan approved. Alpine Credits homeowners get approved. Visit alpinecredits.ca. 9.45 left in the second. Canucks lead the Coyotes 1-0. And they're headed to the power play again with Clayton Keller in the box for tripping. 
Canucks already one for two on the man advantage after the goal by Quinn Hughes moments ago, and they win the faceoff in the Coyotes zone. Connor Garland, top of the left circle with the puck, passes behind the net to Besser, again to Garland. Left corner, now to Hughes at the line, back to Garland, left circle. Down low to Besser, scoop pass through the slot, missed Miller, and Hughes can't hold into the line, he's got to take it back to center. Hughes, leaves at the red line for Garland. Fires it in around the end boards into the Arizona end. It's tipped to the left corner by Ingram, who came out of his net to try and knock it down. Hughes and Besser trying to recover the puck down low. It's played free to the top of the circle. Besser tried to pass to the line for Garland, but that was broken up and cleared down the ice by Nick Bukestad. Canucks haven't been able to set up on this one as battle level from Arizona is a little bit better on this one, where they won that last battle along the wall and cleared it easily down the ice. Patterson to the Arizona line, hammered by Jack McBain, stood him up. Here come the Coyotes the other way. Kraus right wing, drops into the slot for Moser. Got a backhand shot away, but there's a fight behind the play that draws the whistle. JT Miller standing up for Elias Pedersen, dropping the mitts with Jack McBain. McBain trying to come around with the right hand. He's got it free, Pe or Miller rather, trying to protect himself, goes down to one knee as he was taking shots to the back of the head. The linesmen get in and separate them. Miller wanted to keep going. But that'll be the end of that scrap as Elias Pedersen was crunched by Jack McBain in the open ice trying to enter the Arizona zone. It was good anticipation by McBain who realized, all right, Pedersen's going to try to come up the middle. And Pedersen had his head up, saw McBain coming. But at that point, you've got the puck on your stick and you see that train coming. You got to take that hit. JT Miller, as they were coming back up ice, Arizona had a great chance. But McBain and Miller got the gloves off and we're ready to tussle there and McBain's a big boy he's not a he's not a player that is you know shy to drop the gloves good on JT Miller for taking that fight Elias Pedersen is smiling he seems fine at the bench but for team camaraderie that's a good thing I do wonder if JT's gonna get the extra here though Miller also willing to drop the gloves with a severely swollen lower lip after he took a high stick in the loss in Vegas last night but it doesn't look like there's any instigator. It was a clean hit by McBain, I should mention. Shoulder right into the chest, nothing wrong with it, but Miller wanting to stand up for his teammate Pedersen. And that's an element of the game you'd like to see from the perspective of a Canucks fan as you get closer to the playoffs, being willing to go to battle for each other. Absolutely, and no extra penalty on this play. JT Miller, six foot one, 200, about 20 pounds. And McBain, who is six foot three, but weighs less than JT Miller, so pretty even fight when you look at the tail of the tape. Although McBain got some looks in and, and some overhand rights on Miller to take him down. I was going to say it was a pretty short fight, but I'll credit McBain with the scorecard victory. And now here's Hughes, left wing for Joshua into the Arizona zone. Second power play unit out there. Canucks still on the man advantage for another 40 seconds. This is actually a hybrid unit. Hughes and Hironik are out there together. Hironik. Goes left boards for Hughes. Carries into the far corner. Back to Hironic at the line. Philip Hironic to Quinn Hughes. Left wing with room. Wrist shot blocked in front. Gets it back. Throws it to the side of the goal. Loose at the net. Hoaglander trying to bank it off Ingram from below the goal line. Got two X at it. It ends up on top of the net. And the play is whistled down as a result. As Hoaglander just couldn't beat the Coyote goaltender. First from a tough angle and then twice from below the goal line. And it's still 1-0 Vancouver with 8.04 left in the second. You like the creativity from Niels Hoaglander. Behind the net, he's very comfortable, and we've seen him pull off a Michigan, other uh, attempts at that play as well. But on that angle, it was a little difficult. I like the the attempt, but Vasily Pod Colson for was slamming his stick on the other side, wanted Hoaglander to reset it, or at least change up the angle on the right-hand side. Meanwhile, good news for the Canucks on the out-of-town scoreboard. Arizona Coyotes scored four goals in the last, or excuse me, the Dallas Stars scored four goals in the last seven minutes of the second period and lead the Edmonton Oilers 5-0 through 40 minutes. So if the scores in both of these games hold, then Vancouver would be able to extend its lead atop the Pacific Division. But here come the Coyotes. Shilovs makes a save off a shot by Keller on the right wing. Hironic back to it near corner. Teams are back to even strength now. Canucks one for three on the power play tonight. Hironic in his own zone. Passes to center for Besser. He'll flip it in deep, and the Canucks can get a wholesale line change. Michael Kesselring with the puck behind his own net. 
Fires a pass right wing to center. Tipped in deep. It rolls wide of the net, and it's rolled icing, actually, as it was deflected before it reached the red line. So the Canucks will have an offensive zone face-off. 7-10 left in the second period. Vancouver leads Arizona. 1-0 on the goal by Quinn Hughes. is 16th of the year from JT Miller and Elias Patterson. It's currently sitting in the penalty box, but JT Miller now has 42 primary assists after picking up the primary assist on Quinn Hughes' goal. Only Connor McDavid, Nikita Kucherov, and Nathan McKinnon have more primary assists this season. Elite company. Coyotes win the draw. Josh Doan gets it out to center, but it's knocked down by Ian Cole at the red line. Nice pass left wing for Neil Zoman into the offensive end, and he dumps it behind the net. Lafferty on the forecheck, battling with Valimaki near corner. Bukestad back to help out below the goal line, tied up by Oman. Puck comes free to Kesselring behind the net, and he clears it off the far boards to the line, but Zadorov holds in and dumps it back to the end boards. Mikheyev on the forecheck, laid a hit down low on Valimaki. Puck rolls around to the near side. Ian Cole gets it down low to McCabe, trying to drive to the front of the net. Puck rolled off his stick right to Connor Ingram, who covers up and gets the whistle. 6.34 left in the second. Vancouver with a 1-0 lead on the Arizona Coyotes. And following up on that primary assist stat, the franchise record for the Vancouver Canucks batch is 46. So only four assists shy of that for JT Miller. He could break Henrik Sedin's record, which is, when you're talking about some of the best playmakers in Canucks history, number 33 is on the top of that list. Face off of the offensive zone for the Canucks. Shots 19 to 6 in favor of Vancouver and 12 to 3 in this second period. Bluger wins the draw. Right corner for Pod Colson. Some hybrid lines at the moment with Miller in the box. It's Bluger, Pod Colson, and Joshua on the ice together right now. As Myers holds in right point and dumps it behind the net. Connor Ingram out of the goal. Leaves for Travis Dermott on the end boards. Near side for Josh Brown. Lifts it off the wall to center, and Pod Colson drops it back into his own end for Carson Soucy. Soucy, near side for Tyler Myers. Right wing to the red line, dumps it behind the Arizona net. Luger after it on the four-check left corner. Dermott plays it back behind the goal to Brown near side. He's hit by Joshua, but got it free to Liam O'Brien. O'Brien left wing to center. Dumps it behind the Vancouver net. Carson Soucy takes it behind the goal. And plays it up the far side for Pod Colson. He'll center for Myers. Right wing to center, dumps it in. And both teams will complete changes. J.J. Moser behind his own net for the Coyotes. Brings it up the near side, lifts it off the glass all the way down and actually deflects out of play. So the faceoff will come back in the Coyotes zone when we return. 5.32 left in the second. It's the Canucks 1 and Arizona nothing on Alpine Credits Canucks Hockey on Sportsnet 650 and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Ready to build some money muscle? At Coast Capital, we're finding ways to help you get paid more. Our new Elevate checking account has the banking features you want. Plus, comes with free access to Coursera's online training that could help advance your career. That's Ash studying negotiation and Cody's learning the latest in AI. The potential outcome? More income! Switch to Elevate checking today. Plus, for a limited time, new Coast Capital members can get up to $600. Conditions and limitations apply. Come on, team. Let's feel the earn. Hello? Hi, Fiona. It's me. Sarah. Tell me what's happening in Canada. How far away are you today? Let me look. 7,847 kilometers. Oh, my. Where is that? Kyoto, Japan. Talk to me about engagement rings. Engagement rings took a big leap upward in December, just like you predicted. Are the diamond prices at spend still as low as they were? Yes, but no one knows how long that will last. Especially when you consider what's happening worldwide. What do you mean? With diamond prices so low, people all over the world are frantically buying diamonds right now. Are you planning to get a big diamond? I'm I'm certainly giving it some thought. Where are you headed next? It depends on which way the wind is blowing. Are you traveling by hot air balloon? <laughs> no, I'm sailing. Shall I tell Callum and Michael that I heard from you? Are they aware that you and I know each other? No. Let's leave it that way for now. Spence. Woo! Located in Vancouver in Langley. Hi, this is Elias Patterson, and you're listening to the official home of the Canucks Sportsnet 650. Make sure to get your tickets for the Canucks online 50-50 draw. Go to Canucks.com slash 50-50 to enter. Ticket sales close on Monday night. Must be 19 plus and located in BC at the time of purchase to play. Know your limit. 
play within it. Make sure to stay tuned as well for Canucks Central at the intermission with Satyar Shah and Bik Nazar coming up at the end of the period. We'll go to the guys for their analysis in moments. 5.32 left in the second. Canucks up 1-0 on the Coyotes. Quinn Hughes with the lone goal of the game on a power play earlier in this second period. Coyotes win a faceoff in their own zone. Dylan Gunther brings it right wing to center. Banks it to the Vancouver line. Nikita Zadorov knocks it free for Niels Oman. Nice pass right wing to center for Mark Friedman. Friedman right wing into the Coyotes zone. Took a shot from wide on the boards. Deflected wide of the net is Friedman taking a shift as a forward here. It's the first time we've seen him do that tonight. Puck rolls to the Arizona net off the skate of Niels Oman. And Connor Ingram covers up and gets the whistle. Thus far, Friedman been playing as a seventh defenseman, but now takes a shift as a winger, likely due to the fact that JT Miller's still in the box after his fighting major. Not every day you see Nikita Zadorov, Ian Cole, and Mark Friedman on the ice together, but Mark Friedman, going forward, he's trying, he's being aggressive. And what I like about this, even in a small sample size, is Mark Friedman does not shy away from contact. He goes straight to the middle of the ice in front of the net, battling with Lawson Krause. He can draw penalties. It's an experiment for this shift at the very least, but you know he's not going to shy away from contact. Canucks win a face-off at the Coyotes zone. Hughes drops bottom of the left circle. Pedersen with a tight angle wrist shot. It was held out by Ingram. And Hoaglander's after it right corner. Gets it to Pedersen. Below the goal line, trying to cut out front. Another tight angle shot. Another save by Ingram. And Hughes tries to hold into the line, but it's chipped to center by Nick Schmaltz. Clayton Keller at the Vancouver line. Dumps it right corner. Schmaltz has it behind the Canuck net. Drops to Keller in the far corner. Feeds it back to the point for Josh Brown. Again to Clayton Keller, right side. Rink wide pass left boards for Nick Schmaltz. Floats it down the left wing wall for Keller in the corner. Centered in front. What a save by Shelovs on a one-time chance by Kesselring at the right circle. Archer Shelovs goes from right to left and denies him with the pad to keep the score at one to nothing. Easily the best save he's had to make in this game tonight. Beauty save. Shelovs ends up making a probably a goal-saving play as it was right from left, as you mentioned, and one of the few high-danger chances the Canucks have given up tonight. Canucks forechecking in the Coyotes' zone. Josh Doan gets the puck, though. Sweeps it left wing for Matias Michelli at the Vancouver Blue Line. Michelli's pinned to the boards by Carson Soucy. Puck tied up in skates. Josh Doan trying to dig it free. Of course, the son of Coyotes legend Shane Doan playing his fourth career NHL game tonight. He's got a point in every game he's played thus far. And now he's got it left circle. Lost the pocket. Rolls back to the line. Long shot fired wide of the net by Dersey and found in the right corner by Alex Kerfoot. Kerfoot leaves down low for Josh Doan. Pinned to the boards by Carson Soucy. Doan trying to dig for the puck. Soucy gets it free to Garland and he'll clear it high in the air to center on the backhand. 3.20 left second period. Canucks lead the Coyotes 1-0. Arizona pressuring for a tying goal. Here's Michelli in the slot. Right circle. One time chance. Thrown to the goal by Logan Cooley. And again, Shelovs holds it out off the left pad. Canucks to center. Mikheyev driving the Arizona line. Try to toe drag into the slot. Lost the pocket. Rolls right corner. He gets it back and feeds the point for Ian Cole. Cole tried to D to D pass. Zadorov missed it. Doan can't clear. Pressure by Pod Colson in the back check. Now it does come to center, but Zadorov dumps it back behind the Coyote net, and Mikheyev's after it on the four check, right wing half wall. Mikheyev digging away for the puck. Pod pulls in there too. It's tied up along the boards by Travis Dermott. Canucks get it free. Mikheyev feeds the line. Zadorov with a shot tipped on by Oman. Good save by Ingram off the pad. Cooley to the puck, leaves it his own line. Doan gets it out to center, but the Canucks dump it back in. And we'll complete a change. Arizona's got a pretty tired line out there as they get a partial change, too. Moser's been out there for nearly two minutes, and now he's able to get off the ice. Balamaki in his own zone. Leaves for Travis Dermott. Plays it to the Vancouver line. Tip play by Keller, broken up by Besser. Now here's Pedersen the other way. Right circle for Hoaglander. Delays, shoots, stopped by Ingram down low. Good play by Hoaglander to stop up in the right circle and create the shooting angle from the middle of the ice as the Coyotes are forced to clear under pressure and this will be icing against Arizona with 154 left in the second period and the Canucks leading one to nothing on the road at Mullet Arena and a couple of very tired Arizona Coyotes players on the ice Logan Cooley's been out there for 90 seconds Dermott's been out there for nearly 90 seconds and you've also got Lawson Krause who's been out there for a minute. But the Canucks doing a good job of you know, finding a couple opportunities through Niels Hoaglander. But Archer Shelovs on that sequence, two big saves going from right to left to keep this a 1-0 game. 
It's been a tough game for him because he hasn't seen much of the puck, but in the last two or three minutes, saw quite a bit of it. Canucks win the draw in the Coyotes zone. Hughes left point, long shot, sailed wide of the net. Heronix after it on the right wing, dumps it behind the goal for Dakota Joshua. He's pinned to the boards by Yuso Valabaki, who got the puck free to Dylan Gunther, far corner. And Gunther lifts it high in the air, down the ice. Icing waved off, and Heronix back to it behind his own net with 90 seconds left in the second period. It's Vancouver 1 and Arizona nothing. Quinn Hughes, left wing to the Coyotes, line dumps it behind the net. It rolls to the near boards for JT Miller. Miller protected the puck from Bugstad in the corner. Goes back to Heronic at the line. Shot tipped in the slot by Joshua. It deflected high in the air. I think it was blocked. Stayed in play, apparently, because the Coyotes are able to get it out to center. And Hughes at his own line. Tried to clear it ahead. Knocked loose by Miller for Lafferty off the bench. Left wing. Into the Coyotes zone. Trying to drive the goal. Played it to the top of the crease, but it's cleared from the goal mouth by Valimaki. Now Garland gets it behind the Coyote net. Into the final minute of the second. Connor Garland spinning on the end boards. Out the left wing side. Feeds the lines at Orm with a one-time drive. Missed well wide of the net. Lafferty's got it right corner. Tried to play it behind the goal, but there's a whistle as they rule a high stick of the puck. And we'll see where they put the face off here with 47.8 seconds left in the second. The Canucks up 1-0 against the Coyotes. And the Canucks have done a, a good job dominating the shot clock in this period. 17-5, the shot's on goal. But one area you have to be careful is make sure you don't allow anything here. Late in a period, you can give a team confidence if you kind of just take your foot off the gas and overall Vancouver's been extremely strong offensive zone possession time 11 minutes 22 seconds for Vancouver five minutes 55 seconds for Arizona but you got to make sure you continue it all the way to the end of the period and don't take your foot off the gas face off outside the Coyote line one by Jack McBain back into his own zone and now he'll get it left wing at center and dump it in Nikita Zadorov near corner in the Canucks zone. Pressured by McBain into the end boards. Gets it free. Ian Cole. Up the near side for Lafferty. It was tied up by Michelli in the circle. Michelli plays it free right wing. Didn't have any teammates there, though. And Mark Friedman lifts it off the glass and out to center. Lafferty pursuing the puck of the Coyote. Line can't come up with it. Here's Arizona three on two if they hurry. Michelli, right circle, try to drop pass for Dursey. He was stripped of the puck by Besser on the back check. Gets it up the right wing for Lafferty, who tips it deep with a dozen seconds left in the period. Puck cleared to center. Myers has it in his own end. He'll fire it ahead to Besser. Besser settling a rolling puck. Will hold on to it, and the period comes to a close. Canucks only allowed five shots in that second period, and they have the lone goal of the game off the stick of their captain, Quinn Hughes, on the power play. It's Vancouver 1 and Arizona nothing after 2. And Hughes now has the last three goals for this team, two against Vegas and one here today against Arizona, but a couple of big saves by Archer Shilovs going east-west passes by Arizona, but he comes up big in the final five minutes of this period to keep it one nothing. Time for Canucks Central at the intermission. Let's rejoin Satyar Shah and Bik Nazar. This is Canucks Central at the intermission on the official home of the Canucks. Sportsnet 650 and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Use of the line. Right side Miller into the bumper for Besser. Shot on goal. Stop by Ingram. Rebound for Garland. Gets it to Pedersen. Back to Hughes. High slot. Settles a rolling puck. Again to Pedersen. Left side. Rink wide pass to Miller. Top of the right circle. Back to Hughes of the line. Hughes with a shot through traffic. He scores! Special teams, special plays, special players. Quinn Hughes had two goals last night against the Golden Knights, and he gets the Canucks on the board in Arizona. It's one to nothing. Canucks finally find a twine. one nothing lead through the first 40 minutes of this game, and this is Canucks Central at the intermission, brought to you by CertainTeed, the pro's choice for roofing, siding, drywall, and insula insulation. Uh, it is Satyar Shaw with um, Vic Nazar, and we are going to get to some of your thoughts coming in on our Dunbar Lumber Text inbox, 650-650. Keep your thoughts coming in, and we'll interact with you as the show goes on here. But the Canucks finally get a goal. They've had a number of shots in this game. I mean, the Arizona Coyotes have, haven't generated a ton. They've, I think they've created, what, two solid scoring chances. One was Clayton Keller earlier in the second period mm -hmm. where he missed the net, and the second one was... Um, Kessel Ring. Kess Kessel Ring, who uh, had a great one-time opportunity. Silovs made an incredible save going post-to-post -post with the pad. And that's pretty much the toughest save he's had. Outside of that, the Canucks have been in full control, and they finally get a goal, and it happens on a man advantage. Quinn Hughes is the guy who scores. So, yeah, we're talking about the Coyotes with eight shots on goal here. Eight shots on goal. So they have eight shots on goal. They have 
18 shot attempts, five on five. In all situations, the Canucks have 48 shot attempts. Uh, the Coyotes have 21. So uh, it's very much in the Canucks' favor. It's been overwhelming. Yeah, and the scoring chances are 20 to five. High danger scoring chances, 7 1. All situations for the Vancouver Canucks. So uh, very much in control of the game. But I would stop short of saying it's been. Uh, dominant in the sense of like chance after, after chance wave, and everything, but they've been very much in control of this game, which is a positive. And honestly, considering uh, how uneventful that first period was and how little true opportunities were created, a much better second period by the Vancouver Canucks. And look, they got the power play goal. Quinn Hughes, yeah. three goals in a row. Is that a natural hat trick if you do it in two different games? No, I'm getting the big no. But no. He's, he's, he's got the last three goals uh, for the Canucks on a power play that uh, looked a bit sketchy a little bit because there was a bad drop pass by Hughes to Pedersen, uh, which delayed an entry. We'll get two passes to Pedersen on the power play in just a bit. But Hughes hits Miller on an entry, and they get a quick shot off. Brock gets a slot redirect. But eventually, a pass goes across to JT Miller, who does a phenomenal job to take this pass. We talk about pass reception being an underrated skill. He takes this off his skate, off his leg, wherever it hit him, and it lands perfectly. This is like those uh, TikToks you see of influencers that are across the world that are playing soccer that are just trying to like master their first touch. It's an unbelievable take by JT. Sets it up for Quinn. He skates with it a bit and yeah. uh, puts a shot through. And Garland in front causing a bit of uh, screen. Not a great screen as far as the, the size being the eclipse to take out the sun in front of a goalie, but forces Ingram to crane his neck the wrong direction and goes through. Yeah, no, it's great work from Quinn Hughes. And I mean, Quinn Hughes has been real the sole goal scoring threat the last few games here on the power play as well getting his shots through and you know it, it shows you how feeble the Canucks power play has been that Quinn Hughes is the most dangerous threat but that's not to sell Quinn Hughes short with how much he's improved his shot and how he's finding lanes and getting that shot through and he's been terrific 16 goals on the campaign what a, what a magnificent season for number three Quinn Hughes uh, who may very well claim a Norris at the end of this campaign so, so we'll see how that all ends but I, 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 I'm going to stop short of saying the power play looked good just because they scored i don't know if that means the power mm -hmm. play is actually alive or anything like that well there was a couple of chances but yeah it, it's, i mean it yeah it's I mean, a point shot yeah. going through right but, and it's like so the power like I, i'm going to stop short of saying the power play showing signs of life because they had a horrible one in the first period they scored a goal got a couple shots hoaglander uh, on the second power play uh when the second unit was out had mm -hmm. a couple bank shot opportunities they were sort of slot on. redirect the garland's yeah. in front of the net but it's not the type of stuff that you say like oh that's why you want to set things up and get that opportunity off of because it's a really high slot redirect uh from brock besser uh but in general yeah it can be better yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, we have a lot of reaction on the text inbox. We'll get to that coming up in a bit. Uh, let's break down a play. We'll get to some of the scoring chances too, but uh, the, one of the most controversial play, plays of this game happened when Elias Pettersson was blown up on a zone entry by McBain, and then uh, JT Miller steps up and fights McBain to defend him. Now, I'm seeing a lot of people messaging in and saying, um, uh, number one, Elias Pettersson walked into the hit. Watch that play again. I mean, Elias Pettersson takes a pass from Connor Garland going straight ahead i mean the only way for him to take that pass is to take that hit the only the only thing he could have he could have done was take the pass and stop let his teammates go offside and then regroup i mean for, for people saying he had his head down rocking into the play like he receives a pass and he's going towards the blue line i mean i'm not blaming garland on it necessarily but it's, it's pretty much a hospital pass like watch the play again like the only way for Pedersen to take that pass is either to skate forward or if he stops it throws the entire zone entry off so it's not like he has his head down and he's skating into the hit watch the play again that's one thing i'm seeing a lot of people mentioning and the second part of it is the Canucks remain on the power play I'm seeing a lot of people messaging and saying, oh, Miller had to fight and had to take the Canucks off the power play. There was no instigator on the call. There's no instigator. The Canucks remained yeah. on the power play. So I just want to get those two facts straight. You want to criticize Pedersen, we can do that. But I, don't, I just don't know how he takes that pass unless he stops his own entry or just doesn't take the pass. Like, watch the play again and tell me what else he's supposed he's, to do. Unless you, want to, unless you want him to stop and not push forward, which throws the entire play offside, which would be a cowardly play. So I don't know. You're basically asking him to figure out where McBain is as he's trying to receive the pass. Yeah. So he's not supposed to look and bring that puck in. It's it's he's got no chance to avoid. The only thing McBain. he can do is if if Garland throws the puck and then he deflects it and throws it to a corner or something like that, but then I don't know. I, You're I'm on just the power saying, play. Do you want to do a dump and chase? 
can't have it always. I, I just thought it was just a ambulance pass set up by uh, Connor Garland and then JT doing the fight and actually not taking the instigator. You can say, hey, should you just get back into the play? It's clean hit. All this, stuff. but he, he does also technically kill the play dead because it's a it's a fight. Yeah, well, it's a fun, well, I mean, and, and a chance was developing. Well, the chance was developing because puck turned over on the hit, and the, and the Coyotes go the other way. I thought J.T. Miller, number one, he steps up for a teammate, and I think given where the Canucks have been the last few games here, and not showing enough life, having a player step up for another star player can be a galvanizing moment. I'm sure Pedersen appreciates that as well. But I thought J.T. Miller handled it perfectly. If he goes and chases McBain and jumps him and drops the gloves first, he gets an instigator. What he does is wait for it. He squares up with McBain challenges him and McBain technically drops the gloves first which means JT Miller challenged him without making it obvious that it's an instigator and that's why he doesn't take the penalty I thought that that was as well handle the response as you can have as somebody defending a teammate without taking yourself off the power play uh 650 650 uh this one's coming in I play beer league and know not to make that pass that's what I'm saying so for, for those saying um you know Elias Patterson he's had this I mean watch the play again and tell me what he's supposed to do differently uh, 650, 650. A lot of people also texting in about Elias Patterson opting out of a shot against this Ingram. This one I agree with. This, this one, one? This one I agree with. I, I don't know. Now, he, he had a couple of chances before. There was a shift where he threw a shot off Ingram, and then right afterwards threw a shot that hit the post. So maybe he became gun shy all of a sudden. He has one shot on goal. I don't understand why he passed up that opportunity. This shot selection is as puzzling as... The Hronik one we've seen a couple of times, and Hronik had one just last game. But there's the one where Hronik winds up on a big slap shot earlier in the in the season as well, rather than getting a quick shot off. I can't remember who that was against. Was that against Dallas? I can't remember. Anyways, uh, we're it like work from the, the, the down low, and all you had to do was just shoot yes. it in. Uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, and then there's like the Miller one where he's on a breakaway and he shoots it really early. This one's also puzzling because he takes a loose puck and it's room to skate into. Tries to get it to Hoaglander. And, you know, Rick Talkin mentions, hey, I'm all for guys, you know, trying to make plays and showing a little creativity, but make it easier on the guy that you're trying to make a play for. He gives it to Nils Hoaglander. Nils Hoaglander still got a lot of work to do on this play and gets a shot off and it's okay, but... For me, it's I'd rather have Elias Pettersson taking a shot coming downhill off of a turnover against Connor Ingram. Yeah. Passes up a pretty good opportunity. Yeah, and, and that's one of the things we want to see more of from Elias Pettersson is take advantage of those, of those opportunities. Take the game on yourself a bit more. I don't think he's been bad. I don't think any Canuck so far tonight has been bad. I mean, they're not giving Arizona a lot, but... I thought that's the one play where you want to see him be more aggressive, but I think he's been he's been fine in this game. I'm, I'm not looking at this and, and saying Elias Pettersson's having a tough game here tonight necessarily, but the Canucks currently have the one nothing lead. But, I mean, you know, people have to see our text inbox. It's like, no matter what right now, Pettersson's being mentioned, whether it's the fight, a hit, it's like he's, he's under the microscope, and he's got to be better, I understand. But I think there's uh, some hyper-analysis going on and, and people really stretching to find things. There's enough stuff to criticize. We don't have to make stuff up to criticize. But <laughs> obviously, Pedersen, you want to see him be far more aggressive than he has been so far. All right, before we get to some of these text messages, Vic, overall, that period, the Canucks created some, some pretty good scoring chances. And it wasn't mm -hmm. mainly coming from JT Miller or Pedersen. You know, we talk a lot about secondary scoring recently. And some guys aren't finding the back of the net, but the... Uh, the Bluger line has been effective. The Olman line has had, has had a few opportunities. Uh, McKay have had a golden opportunity as well. So they are getting some chances down the lineup tonight. Uh, well, Justin in Langley texting in. Correct me if I'm wrong. McKay has looked like our best player tonight. Uh, featured in a big play. Steal in a breakaway. Goes to the backhand. Uh, can't convert it. Uh, but, yeah, Bluger also has a chance set up by put Colson and McKay and then just Puts it off the heel, hits the bottom of the net. Both moments, a guy lifts the shot. You're looking at a three-goal lead here. But big work by those two guys, uh, Bluger and McKayev, being in the right spots for opportunities. But Colson has a great chance as well. He gets, uh, I'll use the word tied up loosely. Uh, he basically gets uh, armbarred or full Nelson uh, on a play by uh, Gunther. Doesn't get called. All he has to do is poke it in. Ingram is also kind of grabbing his glove as well. I uh, can't convert that play. So they, they're getting opportunities. It just uh, hasn't uh, converted. Uh, still sitting at one nothing. There's also a text here. A, can you talk about the Canucks overall scoring chances? And, and yet they've been there. You just got to bury them. In, in terms of actual quality scoring chances in this game, five on five, 
there's been, I think the Canucks had a, I mean, we were talking about the first period. Maybe there was one or two opportunities, really, uh, in this period. It, the Mikheyev chance, he, he he stole the puck. He went in clean, couldn't lift it on uh, on, on on Ingram and put it over his pad. Beluga had a golden opportunity uh, after Mikheyev fed him and had him wide open for an opportunity, and he just heals the puck and can't get it in. And put Colson had a great net front chance. Mm-hmm. And uh, was it Michelli? You know, Gunter was on him, and mm-hmm. I thought Ian McIntyre nailed it on Twitter. It, said, it wasn't so much that Gunter held on to him. It was more like he mummified put Coles in. It probably could have been a penalty on that aspect, on that play there, but those were like three real golden opportunities. He probably should have scored a goal on at least one of those chances. Yeah, and now you just got to seal it up. Yeah. Yeah, and, and score more. I know you're down down one nothing mm-hmm. here. You got to get another goal and and really put these guys away. All right, keep your thoughts coming into our Dunbar Lumber text inbox six fifty six fifty. We'll take more of your uh, thoughts and comments coming up on the post game show with Satyar Shaw with Big Nazar. Canucks up one nothing against the Arizona Coyotes. Can they take this game home? Batch and Randeep are going to have the call. This has been Canucks Central at the intermission, brought to you by Certainty, the pro's choice for roofing, siding, drywall, insulation, and ceiling systems. More Canucks hockey coming up next on Sportsnet 650. In a world where business knows no borders, Crow provides global reach on a personal scale. Spanning more than 145 countries, Crow's trusted advisors have the knowledge and expertise to add value to your business. From traditional accounting services to business consulting, Crow creates solutions tailored to your unique needs. Let Crow's expertise elevate your business. Visit crowmackay.ca to learn more. Crow. Smart decisions. Lasting value. Breaking story from Alpine News Network. Ron is a teacher helping bright minds, but this time he needed help. Alpine credits on a cosmic superhero with a debt consolidation loan. She conjured a magic book, Debt Consolidation 101. Lesson 1, consolidate debt into one low monthly payment. Lesson 2, nothing. It's a short book. Own your home, need a loan? Alpine credits can help. Alpine credits, where homeowners get approved. When was the last time you hung out with a legend, a true Vancouver legend that every pro athlete, actor, and rock star who is anyone has gotten to know? A place where a legendary night can happen any night. Isn't it time you got reacquainted with this Vancouver legend? Pre-game, post-game, even during the game, the number five orange. And now it's time for our Subaru weather report. So, Harold, what's it looking like? Jim, it's a lovely spring day here on the beach. I came here for some solo time, like I do, but I got hungry instantly, so I went to Bob's Boardwalk Beaster when Bob says, Sorry, cash only. Luckily for me, I always have a $5 bill stashed in my sandals, so I give it to Bob and he says, We don't accept foot money here. That's Thanks, how he Harold. talks. But weather now I'm reports starving, don't matter when you drive a Subaru. Oh, Visit your local Subaru dealer today and book a test drive during the all weather drive event. The following is a message from Canada Action. We don't have to choose between sustainability or the economy. In fact, we can do both by exporting our lower emission liquefied natural gas to the world. We can reduce emissions while creating good paying jobs at home for Indigenous and non-Indigenous communities alike. Demand is growing and the world is asking for our energy. It's time to step up. Learn more at bclnghelps.ca. Hughes cuts in front again, doing laps in the San Jose zone. Quinn Hughes shoots, he scores! And that goal was all Quinn Hughes. Hey Vancouver, Rogers wants you to stay connected to your Vancouver Canucks. The Canucks are off and running. Well, what a heads up play here by Quinn Hughes. Catch every goal on Canada's largest and most reliable 5G network with Rogers 5G mobile plans. To learn more, visit rogers.com forward slash 5G. That's rogers.com forward slash 5G. Rock climb at the epic Skaha Bluffs. Or bike the over 100 trails of Three Blind Mice and the Kettle Valley Rail Trail. When outdoor adventures are what you're looking for this spring, Penticton, B.C. is home to it all. Rock climbing, mountain biking, hiking, golfing, kayaking, and more. The options are endless, and the views are incredible. Plus, don't forget to take a break at one of the many wineries or the eight craft breweries that call Penticton home. Discover B.C.'s mecca of adventure. Head to visitpenticton.com. 
Taxi! Yellow Cab Vancouver is your go-to for a safe and affordable ride anytime. Secure your ride back by downloading the all-new Yellow Cab app and book your prepaid rides. And right now, you can use promo code 2024YELLOW to receive 10% off your next trip. That's promo code 2024YELLOW. Thanks, bud. Download the Yellow Cab Vancouver app on iOS or Android and book your ride today. Or visit yellowcabonline.com. That's yellowcabonline.com. This is Alpine Credits Canucks Hockey. On the official home of the Canucks, Sportsnet 650 and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Welcome back, Brendan Bachelor and Randy Jando with you. Uh, Canucks lead the Coyotes 1-0 after 2, and we'll get to the third period in just a moment. Make sure to stay tuned after the game for the Canucks Central post-game show. Satyar Shah and Bick Nazar will take your calls and texts. They'll chat with Ian McIntyre. You'll hear Rick Tockett's post-game thoughts and much more right here on your home of the Canucks, Sportsnet 650 and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Canucks up 1-0 going to the third. The lone goal of the game scored by the captain, Quinn Hughes. Yeah, he's a bit of a sniper. He's got 16 goals on the year, three goals on his last six shots on goal, but the way that Quinn Hughes was able to walk the line, find the right shooting angle, and then wait for his teammates to create a screen, that's where he's just so methodical right now. And if you start looking at points as a Vancouver Canuck, he's up to 326 points with that last goal, surpassing Matias Olin for second all-time amongst defensemen. Alex Edler's 409 points, not that far away. He's not going to get it this year, but next year, very, very realistic, and you expect him to get it at this rate. Hughes' next assist will break his own record for most assists by a defenseman in a single season in Canucks history. He's got 69 helpers on the year right now, and 70 will set the new record. Nice. Here's Sean Dursey to the Vancouver line. Uh, passes left wing for Nick Schmaltz, who was offside. And the faceoff will come out of the zone. Canucks in white going from right to left in the third. The Coyotes in black skating from left to right. I feel like we're going to have that conversation a lot in terms of Quinn Hughes breaking records, not only franchise records, but at some point NHL records as well. The way him and Kale McCarr have been able to elevate the game. And I remember you know, talking about Eric Carlson and what he was doing, and it was unbelievable the year he scored 82 points. We're talking about Quinn Hughes now at 70 po- uh, assists. He's at 85 points. And... Carlson, of course, had more points than that, too, but 10 years, a lot has changed. Joshua four checking behind the Arizona net. Gets it right circle. Garland fanned on a one-time chance, and the Coyotes come away with it. As Schmaltz tried to escape the zone, but was stripped of the puck on the back check. Coyotes have to go back for it. Michael Kessel, right wing to the Vancouver line, dumps it behind the Canuck net. Battle far corner. McBain gets it loose to the line for Josh Brown. Bouncing shot. Rolled in on Shelovs, who made the save. Hirona gets it free. Nice pass to center for Brock Besser. He'll lift it off the glass into the Coyote end. Niels Hoaglander on the forecheck. Wins a battle with Brown, left corner. Dances free. Nice pass to Besser, top of the left circle. He carries into the corner. Goes back to the line for Nikita Zadorov. Very shot through traffic. Stopped by Ingram. Rebound side of that. Hoaglander trying to chip it on goal. It's still loose and is played into the far corner by Josh Brown. Pedersen goes to Cole at the line. Back to Pedersen. Left side Zadorov. Again to Ian Cole. One-timer. Held out by Ingram down low off the pad. And Pedersen's got it to the corner. Being hounded by Josh Brown. Dumped it behind the net. Jack McBain trying to clear. Pedersen has it again. Spins away from McBain in the right corner. To Hoaglander behind the net. Niels Hoaglander. Tied up by Dermott. Goes to Pedersen right board. Puck hopped over his stick. And Matthias Michelli is out to center. Gains the red line and dumps it into the Vancouver zone. It deflects into the slot. Settled by Cooley, try to drop pass. Jersey fan on a one-timer comes to Krause, who throws it to the net, and Shelovs is there to make the save and get the whistle. 147 into the third period. Canucks lead the Coyotes one to nothing. And a couple of plays there in the defensive zone for the Canucks says a couple of players, Ilya McKeev just leaves the puck behind, and Lawson Krause can turn and fire, create an opportunity on Archer Shelovs. But Shelovs reads the play well and makes sure that no rebound pops out loose. Canucks able to clear the zone off the defensive faceoff. Puck is dumped back in by Dursey on the right wing. And Tyler Myers takes it behind his own net. Myers out the far side. Brings it left wing to center. Mishandled the puck. Turned it over. Coyotes have a two-on-one chance the other way. Cooley down the right wing. Gunther going to the net. Cooley off the boards to the goal. Stopped by Shelovs. Rebound in front. 
They can't dig at home. Moser and Gunther were both there. Now a centering pass and a one-time chance fanned on by Cooley in the slot. Gunther down low, try to tight angle wrist shot, bottom of the right circle. Stopped by Shilovs, and he smothers it to get the whistle. And the Canucks skaters can thank Arthur, Archer Shilovs with the save. Tyler Myers coming up the uh, neutral ice and just leaves the puck behind, which allows Logan Cooley to race down the right-hand side. And Gunther and J.J. Moser somehow do not get the rebound here as the puck is just sitting there after the left pad save by Archer Shilovs. And credit to Shilovs, who keeps battling on that save. Dylan Gunther won't believe that he wasn't able to score this. I don't know how he didn't score either, but the Canucks have to be careful with puck management in the neutral zone. Very sloppy play as they're trying to work their way up the ice. Even though they've been by far the better team in this game, they've only converted once, so all it takes is one bad play to let the Coyotes back into it as Schmaltz gains the Vancouver line. Long wrist shot blocked by Hirona. Schmaltz gets it back. Rink-wide pass to Valimaki. Now to Kessel ring right point. His shot was blocked by Joshua. It broke his stick, but he gloves it out of the zone nonetheless. Kessel ring at his own line. Turned it over to Miller. Got it left wing for Garland, who dumps it in. And Valimaki takes it behind his own net for Kessel ring on the near boards. Pass right wing to center for Schmaltz. Throws it rink-wide. Onto the left boards for Clayton Keller. Keller with a tight angle wrist shot. Rolled through the slot out the near side. Neil Zoman clears to center. And dumps it in from the red line. Connor Ingram out of the net for Travis Dermott behind his own goal. Gets it far boards for Nick Schmaltz who lifts it into the Vancouver end. Canucks regrouping. Zidoroff left wing to center. Dumps it around the end boards. Met by Carconi in the far corner and he'll turn to center with speed. Michael Carconi, the Vancouver line on left wing, dumped it past Pedersen. Only as far as Ian Cole, who feeds behind his own net near corner to Nikita Zadorov. Zadorov, right wing to the red line for Pedersen. Now for Besser, in stride, right circle shot, right on stop by Ingram. Big rebound comes to Pedersen in the slot. He carries it to the left point. Feeds back to the line. Ian Cole couldn't hold in. He dumps it behind the net. It was waved off by the linesman. That looked blatantly offside to me, but the Coyotes clear to center anyway, so it won't matter. Nikita Zadorov lays a hit into the corner. I think it was Liam O'Brien he caught from behind and has fallen on top of it. No arm in the air for the officials as opposed to last night when Zadorov was thrown out of the game for a hit from behind. And Liam O'Brien not happy with that was John at the referee for some time after not even following the puck. And knowing Liam O'Brien I'm surprised the gloves stayed on with him and Zadorov. The NHL's leader in penalty minutes. Tyler Myers back to the puck. Hammer to the forecheck by Jack McBain, who gets it left circle. McBain, who already laid a big hit on Pedersen earlier in the game, plays it behind the net. Josh Doan can't handle it down low. Now Myers lays a reverse hit, takes down McBain, shoves him down to the ice with authority, and the Canucks lift it into the Coyotes' zone. Bluger drops it right circle. Pass into the slot. Susie to the backhand. Threw it to the goal. It bounces wide of the net. It is covered by Ingram at the far post with Pod Colson looking for the loose puck. 4.52 elapsed in the third period. It's Vancouver 1 and Arizona nothing. And that's a lesson for Jack McBain. Do not anger when Tyler Myers, because when he hits back, it can hurt. McBain with a solid hit along the boards originally, really launching into Tyler Myers, bringing the heat, trying to turn the tide in this game. And a little bit later on, Tyler Myers ready for the hit the next time. Six foot three versus six foot eight on that play in. I think that's a draw, but a, a very strong play by Tyler Myers to respond after the initial hit. Offensive zone draw won by JT Miller. The right point for Quinn Hughes. Long wrist shot. Blocked from close range by Lawson Krause. He lifts it out to center. All the way down. Slow roller. Icing against the Coyote. Some feeling in this third period as Arizona can't be happy with their effort. They've got 10 shots on goal. They're trying to create some more here. Putting some pressure on the Canucks. Trying to be physical. But speaking of being physical, another game where Dakota Joshua has been a physical presence. This is a player now with six hits in this game. The last game he had nine. If he gets to eight hits yet again in this game, it would be the fourth game this season. He's got eight hits or more. 26 hits in his three-plus games back in the lineup now. And he wins a face-off in the Arizona end. Left wing for JT Miller on the boards. 
Miller carries into the corner. Pokes it behind the Coyote net. Rims around to the right wing side. Hirona pinches him for the line. Got it to Miller in the corner. Try to center and pass. Tipped off a Coyote stick and back into the Vancouver zone. Quinn Hughes behind his own goal. Skates left wing to center. Passes ahead to Joshua. Try to deke. And he was hit by Dermott, who kind of caught him with a hip check. Now a centering pass from Garland out of the corner. Joshua missed it. Drop of the line by Hughes. Stopped by Ingram, and he smothers the puck before Dakota Joshua could get to the rebound in front. 5.37 gone in the third period. It's still Vancouver 1 and Arizona nothing as the Canucks continue to search for some insurance. And Batch, I don't think that was an intentional hip check either. It looked like Dermott was trying to avoid contact, went low a little bit, and Dakota Joshua just tried to go through Dermott as soon as Dermott went low, it looked like a hip check, but that was just a, a, a fluky incident. Dakota Joshua, no worse for wear as he got up and continued the forecheck. Coyotes win the draw in their own end. Moser behind his own goal. As it far circle, passes rink wide near side for Sean Dersey. Dersey flips it to the Vancouver line. Ian Cole plays it free to Brock Besser. Trying to bank play to center, intended for Hoaglander, but broken up. Now here's Schmaltz back in on the right wing. Pass to the left circle. Shot by Moser was blocked. Here come the Canucks. Chance for a two-on-one. Pedersen to center. Stripped for the puck by Schmaltz on the back check. And he flips it left wing for Nick Bukestad. Bukestad into the Vancouver zone for Schmaltz. Right circle. Threw it to the back door. Big hit as Ian Cole leveled one of the Coyotes who was going to the net trying to tip it home. That was Clayton Keller who ended up in the Vancouver goal. Knocked it off its moorings. And that draws a whistle. 6-10 gone in the third period. Canucks lead the Coyotes 1-0. You're listening to Alpine Credits Canucks Hockey, streaming on the Sportsnet app and along the Sportsnet radio network. Landlords spend 76 hours managing their property in a year. That's 19 date nights. 25 hockey games. And 37. Dad, let's get some ice cream. Moments. What could you be doing with your time? At Hope Street, we help busy landlords get their time back. Live life, get paid. Become an armchair landlord today. Hope Street, because life's too short to spend it managing properties. Hopestreet.ca Tuesday. This is the Million Dollar Season! Canada's Got Talent is back. It's up. With the biggest season yet, this year's winner will receive a life-changing $1 million. The largest prize in Canadian TV history. All thanks to Rogers. This is the biggest season on the biggest show in Got Talent history. Canada's Got Talent. The Million Dollar Season. All new Tuesday, 8, 7 central on City TV or streaming on City TV+. Plus. Waypoint Insurance has been here for over 150 years, seeking and sourcing ways to fill your home with safety, comfort, and peace of mind. They travel the same roads, trek the same trails, and make their way through life's adventures, setting their sights on a life worth living. Because this is Waypoint's home, their playground, their livelihood. So go explore. From business to home to auto to personal insurance, Waypoint has your back. Waypoint Insurance, together protecting what you love. Visit waypoint.ca. Hey, this is JT Miller, and you're on the home of the Canucks. Canucks with the draw. Miller scores right off the faceoff. He rips it top shelf. Sportsnet Radio Network. You're listening to Alpine Credits Canucks Hockey on Sportsnet 650 and the Sportsnet Radio Network. Own your home. Alpine Credits can get your loan approved. Alpine Credits homeowners get approved. Visit alpinecredits.ca. 6-10 into the third period. Canucks lead the Coyotes 1-0. Vancouver out shooting Arizona. 27-9 in the hockey game and 4-2 here in the third period. Defensive zone draw for the Canucks. Far circle to our right. Jack McBain and JT Miller on the draw. McBain wins it back to the line for Valimaki. Left circle Michelli with a wrist shot. It was tipped wide to the net. Joshua onto it on the near boards, battling with Josh Doan, who dumps it back behind the Canuck net. Hughes has it on the end boards. Plays it far side for Connor Garland on the half wall. Has to go back to Hughes. He reverses behind the net to Hironik on the near side. Hironik banks it off the boards, out to center. Joshua can't get it deep from the red line. Doan drives back in on the right wing. Try to shot block by Hironik. It rolls behind the net, and Hughes battles with Doan on the end boards. Josh Doan protected the puck left corner. Try to centering pass from McBain. Tipped out of the zone by Garland. And Valimaki takes it back to his own line. Delayed call against the Canucks here. 
as Ingram goes to the bench. I think this might be on Hughes as Doan was tripped up on the boards as the Canucks were able to get it out of the zone. So six on five for Arizona for the moment until the Canucks can touch the puck. Schmaltz left wing into the Vancouver end. Drops far boards for Michelli. Back to Valimaki at the line. Right circle Keller. Near point Jersey. Again to Keller. Passes behind the net to Alex Kerfoot. Now to the near side for Jersey. Top of the circle. Watched by Bluger. Forced back to the line. Bluger poked it away. Michelli holds in left point. Dumps it behind the net. Zadorov touches the puck. And the Coyotes will get their second power play of the game. 7.28 into the third. Trailing the Canucks 1-0. And the Canucks captain, Quinn Hughes, will now skate over to the penalty box. And they're calling this hooking. As Joshua got his stick in on Doan 2. But they've taken Hughes. I think it was because Hughes was already engaged in that battle yeah. that they're giving it to, to Hughes for hooking. And he's skating over now. But Josh Doan, who's got five points in three games in the NHL. You mentioned it, Shane Doan's kid. Uh, ASU player as well so he's played in this ring quite a bit draws that penalty and Arizona goes to the power play for the second time tonight trying to tie the game Canucks lead one nothing Coyotes win the draw Jersey top of the point to Keller right circle rink wide pass to Dylan Gunther on the left wing side Gunther to Jersey and again to Gunther on the left wing back to Jersey with room right point Passes near corner to Keller, threw it to the goal, held out by Shilovs on the goal line as Keller tried to sneak it between his legs from a tough angle, but the Vancouver netminder was ready and waiting to make the save. And there was a little bit of room for a cross-ice feed potentially as well as Schmoltz was inching closer and maybe looking for a rebound. Schmoltz has got 10 power play goals this year leading this team. And Clayton Keller, 32 goals of his own. So the two biggest threats on the power play. Face off one back to the corner by the Canucks. JT Miller near side, tied up by Schmaltz, can't clear. One of the Coyotes went down. Keller was hit into the boards, I believe, by Susie. Puck was underneath him, but now it comes loose to Gunther in the left corner. Pinned to the wall by Pedersen. Schmaltz in to get it. Feeds the line for Jersey. Trying to pass back to Schmaltz. Far boards broken up and cleared out of the zone by Pedersen. But Jersey at the red line goes right wing for Keller, who fires it back in deep. Still more than a minute left in the Coyote power play. Just over eight minutes gone, third period. Canucks lead Arizona, one to nothing. Here's Keller right circle back to Jersey at the line with a long drive. Blockered away by Shilovs. He used the waffle board to direct it out of play, and the faceoff will stay in the Vancouver end. And the Canucks do get lucky here as well. Elias Pedersen has a chance to get the puck out of the zone on the backhand. He is unable to do so. Arizona keeps it in. Puck moves over to the right-hand side and eventually back to the point as Jersey leans into one, but a good save by Shilovs to read that and direct it off the playing surface. Bukestad and Bluger on the draw. Bluger won it cleanly. The linesman didn't like it, and then he gave Bukestad a very healthy cross-check that the officials will just pretend they didn't see. Bukestad's had a, a chippy game himself, so I'm sure he's not well-liked on the ice right now. Bluger wins the faceoff back to Ian Cole, who clears it all the way down the ice. And Connor Ingram leaves it behind the net for use of Alamaki. Alamaki at his own line. Drops it to Logan Cooley. Left wing for Matias Michelli. Into the Vancouver zone. Dumps it right corner. Bukestad is after it. Pushed to the wall by Dakota Joshua. And the Canucks are able to clear to center. 35 seconds left in the Arizona power play. Michelli passes right wing. Bukestad missed it. Ian Cole's got it. Forced deep by Bukestad. Makes a nice play. Middle of the ice to get it free. And the Canucks clear it all the way down. Valimaki leaves at his own line. For Logan Cooley with speed. Passes right wing for Bukestad into the Vancouver zone. Snapshot stopped up high by Shilovs. Canucks able to clear the rebound out of the zone. Dying seconds of the Coyote power play. And they dump it back into the Vancouver end. Myers behind his own goal. Fans on a clearing attempt. Prowse try to pass into the slot. Broken out by McKay. He'll fire it up the left wing for Hughes out of the box. Made a move and threw himself offside of the Arizona blue line. Receiving the pass and there'll be a neutral zone faceoff. With 9.33 elapsed in the third, and Vancouver leading one to nothing in Arizona. And a slight delay from Niels Oman there as he ended up gathering the puck in the offensive zone, just bobbled it, and then the pass came out for Quinn Hughes. And that slight delay from Oman just threw Quinn Hughes off in terms of timing as he got just 
there a second, maybe a half a second earlier than the puck got there. Otherwise, it could have been off to the races for Quinn Hughes. Face off outside the Arizona blue line. As we near the midway mark, third period. Canucks up 1-0 against the Coyotes. Dakota Joshua left corner. Chips it around to the right wing side for Garland in the Coyote end. Back to Joshua behind the net, protecting the puck from McBain. Miller in to get it. Carries up the left wing wall, being hassled by Kesselring. It came to the line. Susie holds in. Joshua is hit hard into the end boards by Moser. And the Coyotes come away with it. Here's Carcone, right wing to the Vancouver line. Force wide by Susie. Carcone to the front of the goal. Goes to the forehand. Can't jam it home. Shelovs makes the save, but there's a Vancouver penalty on delay. As Carcone was knocked down driving the net, Quinn Hughes doesn't like it. Canucks are complaining, but they'll go to the penalty kill when we return. 9.57 left in the third. It's Vancouver 1 and Arizona nothing on Alpine Credits Canucks Hockey on Sportsnet 650 in the Sportsnet Radio Network. Hello? Hi, Fiona. It's me. Sarah. Are the diamond prices at Spence still as low as they were? Yes, but no one knows how long that will last. Especially with what's happening worldwide. What do you mean? Diamond prices so low, people all over the world are frantically buying diamonds right now. You planning to get a big diamond? Certainly giving it some thought. Shall I tell Callum and Michael that I heard from you? Are they aware that you and I know each other? No. Let's leave it that way for now. Spence, located in Vancouver and Langley. And now it's time for our Subaru weather report. So, Harold, what's it looking like? Jim, we can expect more thunderstorms as the evening approaches, and then overnight... Oh, hold on. Uh, yeah, can I get uh, two number sixes with a side of curly fries? Hold the onions, please. Yeah. Uh, Harold, are you in the drive through right now? Jim, no one listens to this. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, great. Weather reports don't matter when you drive a Subaru. Visit your local Subaru dealer today and book a test drive during the all-weather drive event. Hi, Christian here from Speedy Glass. Driving around with a crack in your windshield? Not the safest, right? Don't worry, the experts at Speedy Glass have your back. Our certified technicians will carefully replace your windshield for a new one with the same quality standards and features. We'll even recalibrate your driver assistance front camera using cutting edge tools. Book an appointment today with your local Speedy Glass at speedyglass.ca. Speedy Glass Repair, Speedy Glass Replace. Hey, this is Carson Susi, and you're on the home of the Canucks, Sportsnet 650. 9.57 left in the third period. Canucks lead the Coyotes 1 to nothing, but they're headed to the penalty kill. As Quinn Hughes has been called for tripping, the Canucks did not like this call. Rick Tockett was using some uh, colorful language, shall we say, from behind the Vancouver bench talking to the referees. But it's their second PK of the third period. They still lead 1 to nothing. And they need to hold off the charge from Arizona now. And he's still using that colorful language. It hasn't stopped. Puck out to center. Off the faceoff of the Vancouver zone. Coyotes will regroup at the red line. And Nick Schmaltz gains the Vancouver blue line. Left boards for Alex Kerfoot. Pushed to the wall by Teddy Bluger. Jersey gets into the point. Passes right side to Keller. Rink wide feet. Throw to the goal by Schmaltz. What a save. She loves across. I think Kerfoot might have tipped that on net. And Archer Shelov's made a great save on the redirect. Now Dersey, top of the point. Wrist shot blocked in the slot. Dakota Joshua felt that one. Dersey again. Right wing side for Clayton Keller. Passes side of the goal for Alex Kerfoot. Again to Keller. Near circle. Back to Kerfoot side of the net. And Fred Gunther scores! Who else but Dylan Gunther to tie the game for the Coyotes? A power play goal in the final 10 minutes of the third. And game on, it's tied at one. Dylan Gunther gets his 13th goal of the season as Arizona just works it down low. Kerfoot gets the puck from Keller. And to the left of Shelovs, Kerfoot just passes it to the middle of the ice. And unfortunately for Nikita Zadorov, he can't cut off the pass to Dylan Gunther, who beats Shelovs. Locker's side to tie this one up after an excellent save by Shelovs on Kerfoot. Arizona eventually delivers and gets their first goal of the game. The goal by Gunther comes at 10.46 of the third period on the power play to tie the game at one. The time of the goal is brought to you by Crow, your trusted advisors for 55 years. Learn more at crowmackay.ca. Kerfoot and Keller draw assists. And the Canucks back into a level game here despite dominating most of this 
matchup in Arizona. We'll see what they can cook up here to try and score a winning goal. Josh Brown near corner in his own end goes behind the net for Travis Dermott. Played it up the far side, held in by Besser at the line, bounced it back into the slot, and Brown has it as Hoaglander is tied up with Brown away from the play. Looked like he caught a stick in the face. Officials let it go. Michelli right wing into the Vancouver end with a high-rising wrist shot that went over the crossbar, but not by much. Now Michelli again, top of the point, turns it, shoots, stopped by Shelov's rebound, found by Hughes in the corner, gets it free to Pedersen. And he'll skate it to center himself, gain the red line, and dump it in so the Canucks can change. And Arizona's attacking down the left-hand side. First, it was Carcone on Susi, and here it was Michelli on Quinn Hughes. They're finding some space down that, on that, along that side. Puck dumped behind the Vancouver net. Carson Susi back to the puck. Plays it to center for Connor Garland. Garland, left wing for Joshua, into the Arizona end, back to Garland. Now for Joshua, going to the goal, stopped in tight by Ingram. And the Coyotes clear the rebound all the way down. This will be icing against Arizona. 7.54 left in the third. The Canucks and the Coyotes are tied at one. Excellent duo play by Dakota Joshua and Connor Garland. Garland picks up the puck in the neutral zone, passes it to Joshua, gets it back, and eventually back to Joshua. A left shoulder save by Connor Ingram, but... Dakota Joshua came close as he elevated the puck. Just ends up hitting the shoulder of Ingram. Offensive zone draw to the left of Ingram in the Arizona end for the Canucks. Uh, the Coyotes come away with it, and Nick Schmaltz lifts it off the boards back into the Vancouver end. Tyler Myers takes it behind his own goal. Out the far side. Passes it to center. It's tipped in deep. And Dersey goes back to it behind his own net for the Coyotes. Sean Dersey. Bank pass right wing to center. Rolls all the way down. Icing waved off. Ian Cole back to it. Hitting the end boards by Liam O'Brien. Left for Zadorov behind the net. Plays it up the far side of the line but not out. Kerfoot held in and dumped it back to the corner. Cole gets it up the boards. Lafferty was taken down away from the play. Canucks bench was calling for a penalty. The officials will not oblige them as it was Moser that knocked him down. And the Coyotes are in on the forecheck. Neil Zoman back to the puck behind his own net. Got it up the far side for Besser. Couldn't clear. Chipped back deep by Logan Cooley. For Michael Carcone in the left corner. Carcone up the board. Centers for Dylan Gunther. Spins in the left circle. Gunther passes right point. Dermott with a one-time shot. Blocked in front. Rebound sent wide to the net by Josh Brown. As Cooley was taken down by Zadorov in front of the net. And now Ilya Mikheyev at his own line. Plays it out of the zone. Coyotes send it back in. It's offside against Arizona. With 6.45 left in the third, and the game tied at one. And both teams calling for penalties on that last shift as the Canucks were calling on one on interference on Sam Lafferty in the defensive zone. A little bit later on, Logan Cooley gets dumped in the middle of the ice by Nikita Zadorov. So I think based on that last penalty call that Quinn Hughes got called for tripping, there's no real standard right now because to me that was a bit of a phantom call in here now you've got a couple of shouts for penalties neither of them call Puck dumped in behind the net of Ingram who clears it high around the glass far side but Pog pulls and holds in left corner for Quinn Hughes threw it to the goal it went through the crease out the far side Pedersen's got it right corner back to the line Hironic fans on a one-time shot blocked by Krause he'll chip it out to center but Hironic plays it free to Hughes on the near boards Quinn Hughes sends it high off the glass back down the ice icing against the Canucks and the faceoff will come back in the defensive zone. Brendan Batchelor and Randeep Janda with you. Satyar Shah and Dan Riccio brought you the pregame show. Sat has been with Vic Nazar at the intermissions, and they'll be back for the Canucks Central postgame show, where they'll be joined by Ian McIntyre. Fast Eddie Gregory producing the broadcast from Sportsnet 650 Control tonight. Cam Vera is the executive producer of Canucks Hockey and our fearless leader. It takes a cast of thousands to bring you the action along the Sportsnet radio network. But the Coyotes win a faceoff in the Vancouver zone. Clayton Keller left corner, chips it behind the net for Nick Bukestad. Bukestad out the left wing side to the line for Valimaki. Right point Kessel ring. Passes to the near circle for Keller. Again to Valimaki. Now on to the left side. Puck is settled by Nick Bukestad. Forced to the corner by Hughes. He drops it on the boards. And Keller's after it for the Coyotes. Played a pass back to the line. Held in by Kesselring, but then it's cleared to center by Philip Hironic. Hironic gets it in his own zone after the Coyotes dumped it back in. Leaves for Hughes behind the net. Hughes with a backhand pass near side for JT Miller. Miller to center for Garland, driving the Arizona line. Down the left wing. Spin around a move away from Moser. 
Pushed to the boards. Keeps the puck. Spins into the corner again. Goes to Miller behind the net. Lost the puck in his skates. Michelli clears it near side. But Susie pinches in from the line to hold it in as Michelli takes down Garland. Battling down low. Garland back on his feet after the puck. Moser gets it loose. Down low to Michelli. Fanned on a play. Pressured by Joshua. But keeps the puck. Gets it near side for Moser. And he passes to center for Jersey into the Vancouver zone. Puck check by Susie comes to Doan, dumps it left corner, met by McBain down low on the boards. And he rims it around the zone to the right point. Josh Brown holds in, long shot, blocked in front by Myers. Rebound comes to Garland near circle. He clears it to the boards. McBain plays it deep for Doan behind the net. Josh Doan left circle to Josh Brown to the line. Down the near side for Michelli. Canucks running around in their own zone a bit here. Michelli's got it right circle, center and pass. Bounce to the left side. Dermott couldn't settle it. He'll take it behind the net. Dermott hit to the end boards by Susie. Came up front for McBain. Quick shot stopped by Shelovs. Rebound in front. The Canucks, the beneficiaries of a quick whistle from the referee as the puck squirted loose into the slot just as the whistle sounded. And McBain and Susie having to be separated by the linesman at the front of the net. 4.30 left in the third period. It's Vancouver and Arizona tied at one. And we'll have the conclusion of tonight's game when we return on Alpine Credits Canucks Hockey, streaming on the Sportsnet app and along the Sportsnet radio network. If you know your face-offs from your playoffs, you're ready to play now. If you've ever explained icing, you're ready to play now. If you know what PPG stands for, hint, it's power play goal. We're so ready for Play Now Sports, the official sports betting partner of the Vancouver Canucks. Get started with a $20 free bet at playnow.com slash radio. Conditions apply. Know your limit. Play within. Must be 19 plus. Skincare that works 24-7. Save over 45% on a skin non-negotiable supersized cleanser duo in wand. The Today Showstopper on April 6th at TSC. With morning and night cleansers that help maintain, enhance, and protect skin to reduce signs of aging. Save over 45% on the skin non-negotiable supersized cleanser duo in wand. The best offer of the day on April 6th at TSC. Shop exciting offers every day at tsc.ca. Your business is more than just numbers. It's years of hard work, dreams, and passion. But in the midst of the hustle, have you taken the time to understand its true worth? Crow's trusted advisors can help. With global expertise across a wide variety of industries, let Crow uncover the real value of your business. Redefine your company's success. Visit crowmackay.ca to learn more. Crow. Smart decisions. Lasting value. Hey, this is Carson Susie. They score! And just like that, it's 3-2 Vancouver. And you're on home with Canucks, Sportsnet Radio Network. Four and a half minutes left in the third period. Canucks and Coyotes tied at one. Brendan Batchelor and Randy Janda with you. The player of the game is brought to you by Waypoint Insurance. From business to home to auto to personal insurance, Waypoint has your back. Waypoint Insurance, together protecting what you love. Visit waypoint.ca. And our player of the game tonight is Quinn Hughes. Quinn Hughes has a power play goal, 22 minutes and 10 seconds of ice time. And just opening so up so many shooting lanes, especially on the power play, giving his team some options. Just a, a dynamic player and continues to pick up the goals. 16th goal of the year for him. Canucks dump it into the Coyotes zone. Lafferty on the forecheck. Hit Josh Brown into the end boards. McKayev gets it free in the corner. Ilya McKayev spinning on the left wing wall. Protected the puck from Alex Kerfoot. Goes back to the line for Zadorov. One time snapshot. Missed the net. Ian Cole missed it on the right wing boards. And here come the Coyotes to center. Josh Brown left wing to the red line. Is content to dump it in. And peel off on a change. Shelov's out of the goal. Passes far corner to Ilya McKayev. He'll take it behind his own net with 3.50 left in regulation time. McKayev near boards for Ian Cole. Back to McKayev. Left wing into the Coyote zone. Dumps it behind the net. Net in the far corner by Schmaltz. He's pressured by Patterson. Puck rolls behind the goal. Besser missed it. And Kesselring has it for the Coyotes instead. Michael Kesselring. Right wing to center. Goes rink wide far side for Valimaki. Now for Schmaltz into the Vancouver zone. Attempt to centering pass block by Hironic. Bounce middle of the ice. Hoaglander couldn't clear it. Besser missed it too. And Hughes takes it deep in his own end. Across to Hironic far side. Passes left wing to center for Hughes. Into the Coyote zone. Hughes. Left wing. Delays of the hash marks. Back to Hironic with room. Top of the point. Long wrist shot. Stopped by Ingram. And he'll hold for the whistle. With 3.08 left in the third. And the game tied at one. 
Philip Rona getting a shooting lane there as he wrists one in. A little bit of traffic in front of the Canucks, excuse me, the Arizona net as Brock Besser and Niels Hoaglander were trying to get a deflection, but that was an easy save for Connor Ingram. Canucks starting to look a little fatigued here, second of a back-to-back, -back, and Arizona still a little bit more jump in their skating. Remember, they haven't played a game since Saturday, so that game against the Rangers where they ended up losing 8-5 has been the last time they played a game. Miller wins the faceoff of the Coyote and left point for Quinn Hughes. He'll go to the right side for Hironic. Down the far boards to Miller, spinning high in the zone to Hironic. Left circle in front to Miller. Couldn't get a shot away. Keeps the puck. Goes back to Hughes at the line. Again to Hironic left boards. Threw it to the crease. Bounce off a skate to Miller. Right circle. One time chance. Stopped by Ingram. Across to his left. Great save. And Lawson Kraus clears it out to center. It's tipped in deep by Dylan Gunther. And it's icing against Arizona as Gunther hadn't reached the red line yet. So the Canucks will have another offensive zone faceoff. With some good puck movement. And JT Miller with a good chance off the right wing stopped by Connor Ingram to keep the game tied at one a decent look for JT Miller but Connor Ingram as the puck popped over to the right hand side kind of slowed down a little bit gave Ingram enough time to go from right to left to make that save the Canucks need pressure like that here in the final few minutes to try to get this one important on the other town scoreboard as well Edmonton getting absolutely annihilated today by the Dallas Stars 5-0 so Canucks got to take advantage they can open a seven-point lead over the Oilers in the race for the Pacific Division with a win. As the Coyotes ice the puck again. Edmonton will still have two games in hand, but the Oilers have quite a busy schedule down the stretch here, and a Vancouver win tonight coupled with that loss would make it really hard for Edmonton to make up that ground. And why is that important? You got home ice advantage, right? In the playoffs, that gives you a the division which is a sense of pride but more importantly as well in the playoffs you end up meeting that team in the playoffs you want to make sure that you have that home ice advantage you get the benefit of playing at home first and last potentially if you end up going to a game seven Canucks win the draw Quinn Hughes left point dumps it behind the Arizona net Hoaglander meets it right corner Feeds the line for Philip Verona. Hironic with a wrist shot, bouncing side of the goal. Hoaglander's got it in the corner, protecting the puck from Moser. Goes behind the net to Besser. Left point for Quinn Hughes. To the right side for Hironic. Passes side of the net for Hoaglander. Spins behind the goal. Now to the left corner for Besser. Dumps it back for Hoaglander. He'll chase it down in the right corner. To the line for Hironic. Left side Hughes. Spins away from Gunther to the top of the point. Hughes protecting the puck. Right circle, low backhand shot. Kicked out by Ingram to the near corner. Hironic gets it and leaves for Hughes. Under two minutes left, third period. Game tied at one. Hughes with a long wrist shot. Ripped it wide of the net. Rebound for Garland. Right circle. He scores! Connor Garland, Johnny on the spot on the right wing. Fires it past Connor Ingram. And the Canucks go up 2-1 to one with 1.51 left in the third. And it's the former Coyote getting it done for the Canucks on the road. And the revenge game is complete for Connor Garland. He scores the goal here, but Quinn Hughes doing magical things, walking the line, creating space for himself, gets a shot off and an active bounce towards Connor Garland as Hughes lets a wrister go, bounces off the boards, and a perfect placement of the puck by Connor Garland right after, just below the bar. I wonder if this was intentional from Quinn Hughes. The way that this bounces off the boards, it's perfectly placed. Perfect ex execution from Connor Garland, who makes it 2-1 with 1.51 left in this game. Garland's 16th of the year and the 99th goal of his NHL career comes at 18.09 of the third period to give the Canucks the 2-1 lead. The time of the goal is brought to you by Crow, your trusted advisors for 55 years. Learn more at crowmackay.ca. Canucks ice the puck off the ensuing faceoff, so the draw will come back in their own end. Now leading 2-1 with 1.45 left in the third period and Quinn Hughes gets the primary assist, so as we mentioned earlier, he has now broken his own record, his 70th assist of the season, more than any defenseman in Canucks history in a single season. Unbelievable player, has been the star of this game from a Canucks perspective, just creating opportunities out of nothing, and he's also got his 18th, excuse me, the 22nd multi-point game this season. Canucks get it off the faceoff. Ian Cole clears to the blue line. Connor Garland sweeps it to center. It's six on five for Arizona. Trailing Vancouver two to one. With 90 seconds left in the third period. 
Sean Dersey deep in his own zone. Pressured by Garland on the four check. Leaves far corner for Michelli. Played it to center. And the puck is dumped into the right corner in the Vancouver zone. Susie back to it. Gets it around the glass. Held in by Kerfoot. Keller lays a hit on Susie down low. Gunther takes it behind the Vancouver goal. Try to centering pass block by Myers. Susie gets it below his own goal line. Flips it out to center. Slow roller misses the net and it's icing. With 66 seconds now remaining in the third period. And the Canucks up 2-1. to one. And the Vancouver Canucks have Garland, Joshua, Miller, Susie, and Myers on the ice right now. And you can expect the same players for Arizona to be on the ice. Their star players like Keller and Michelli, who have had a pretty good season this year, even though they haven't had the timeout, excuse me, the, the success. But there is a timeout on the play as well as Arizona is going to try to go over, try to maybe have a set play off this faceoff as... Vancouver, it hasn't been pretty the entire time, even though they've had ozone possession time. 15 minutes in the offensive zone to 11 minutes of Arizona. And prior to the third period batch, Arizona had very little offensive zone time. They've had more of it here in the third. But star players, special players, can create moments out of nothing. Quinn Hughes just able to separate from the Arizona players to give himself a little bit of time to get a shot off. And Connor Garland the circling in and around the net making sure that he can pick up that rebound. And what a shot it was, just below the bar. Connor Ingram tried his best to get it, but couldn't get there. Rick Tockett with the whiteboard, speaking to the group that will be on the ice. Looks like it'll be the Miller line with Joshua and Garland and Susie and Myers on the back end that will be tasked with at least the first part of this game-ending sequence with 106 remaining. Canucks protecting a 2-1 lead. Coyotes with six skaters on the ice. Michelli, Dersey, Keller, Schmaltz, Kerfoot, and Gunther. And the faceoff comes to the right of Arthur Shilovs in the Vancouver zone. Miller and Kerfoot on the draw. Kerfoot wins it back to Schmaltz. Top of the point for Dersey. Trying to shot through traffic. Block side of the net by Susie. It's sat loose. And Shilovs is able to cover it with Bukestad trying to poke it home. And Carson Susie blocks the shot rather unconventional it looked like he was trying to do a glove save there in front of Shilovs that can be tricky because it can go any which way with Tyler Myers just flattening Alex Kerfoot in front of the net before he could get the rebound and good awareness by Archer Shilovs to cover up immediately Beluger Mikheyev and Pedersen onto the ice now as the Canucks change the forward unit and it'll be Bluger and Bukestad this time to the left of Shelovs. Bukestad wins it. Right point for Keller. Middle of the ice for Dersey. Top of the point. Now to the left circle for Matthias Michelli. Has a give and go. Far corner. Gets it back to Dersey at the line. Long drive stop by Shelovs. Rebound in front. Chip wide to the net by Schmaltz. Mikheyev can't clear the zone. Coyotes dump it back into the corner. Hughes back to the puck. Gets it ahead to Bluger. Out to center for Pedersen. Right wing to the red line. Delays. Passes rink wide for Mikheyev. Into the Coyote zone. Mishandled the puck. Takes it into the corner. Carries it behind the net. He's bundled into the end boards by Bukestad. But Bluger's after it. Pinning it to the wall. Trying to run time off the clock. Coyotes get it free. Clayton Keller to center with just over 20 seconds left in the third. Puck is dumped in on Shelovs. He turns it near corner. Keller gets it. Dumps it behind the Vancouver net. Left side for Matthias Michelli. Cycles it back behind the goal. Dylan Gunther's got it on the end boards. Right corner for Keller. Ten seconds left. Through it to the net from right along the goal line. And Shelovs makes the save and covers up. The clock reads 8.8 .8 seconds now left in the third period with the Canucks up 2-1. to one. And Clayton Keller just trying to throw the puck on net where Schmoltz and Bukestad were skating, trying to find a rebound. But Shelovs yet again does a good job of controlling the area in front of him. Doesn't let the puck pop out. And I've liked the game from Archer Shilovs today. It's a very difficult game from early on, as you're not seeing much of the puck. But he's been composed for the most part. And hasn't been over-aggressive like he was against Anaheim. He's been very confident in that crease. Face-off won by Miller into the near corner for Zadorov. Clears it out to center. Five seconds left. Slow roller. Won't reach the empty net. Jersey back to it. Throws it up the ice, but the game comes to an end. It was a little closer than Vancouver would have liked in the third period, but they edged the Coyotes 2-1 to one on the road in Arizona. Quinn Hughes and Connor Garland with the Vancouver goals. Hughes with a goal and an assist. Arthur Shilovs makes 22 saves for his second victory of the year in the NHL. And Vancouver's back in the win column, and they're seven points clear of the Edmonton Oilers atop the Pacific Division.
tonight, the Canucks had the territorial advantage, but on the scoreboard, it didn't really matter. It's a shot clock favored Vancouver. The ozone possession time favored Vancouver, but with a couple of minutes left in this game, it's still a tie game, but that's where the special players step up, and Quinn Hughes did exactly that. A goal on the power play, another assist to set up Connor Garland uh, off that shot that he ends up cleaning up the rebound, and to me, that's what the difference is here, is Quinn Hughes can do things that really no other defenseman on the planet can. Once again, the final score, the Canucks 2 and the Coyotes 1 for Randy Janda. This is Brendan Batchelor. The Canucks Central Post Game Show starts right now. Internet 936, Blues on Internet 945. 8 p.m. Minnesota Wild take on the Colorado Avalanche. Wild on XM223 Internet 934, Avalanche on Internet 927. 10.30 p.m. San Jose Sharks take on the LA Kings. Sharks on Sirius and XM Channels 91 Internet 943, Kings on Internet 933. I'm Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM NHL schedule for Thursday, April the 4th. All times are Eastern and please remember, all games, times, and channels are subject to change. Check SiriusXM.com for the latest updates. In the NHL, 7 p.m., Montreal Canadiens take on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Canadians on XM 220 Internet 935, Lightning on Internet 946. 7 p.m., Columbus Blue Jackets take on the New York Islanders. Blue Jackets on XM 219 Internet 928, Islanders on Internet 938. 7 p.m., Washington Capitals take on the Pittsburgh Penguins. Capitals on XM 222 Internet 950, Penguins on Internet 942. 7 p.m., Carolina Hurricanes take on the Boston Bruins. Hurricanes on Sirius and XM Channels 91 Internet 925. Bruins on Internet 922. Mad Dog Sports Radio has the best sports talk in the business. Covering sports with a passion and knowledge you need. Mad Dog Sports Radio. Sirius XM 86. And the SXM app. Carolina Hurricanes forward Seth Jarvis guessed it on the power play with Steve Coolius and former National Hockey Leaguer Anthony Stewart and talked about a whole host of things on Sirius XM NHL Network Radio. So I mentioned your third year. You've played just over 200 games. Uh, let's go back to the beginning. What was your come to the NHL moment coming out of Portland? You did have some time in the AHL. You're so good. You didn't stay down there very long. What was the, What was an early moment of looking up and seeing a Sid or Ovi or somebody else like that, Seth? Yeah, there's yeah, playing those guys, especially in our division, has been uh been fun. I mean, when you're when you're coming in like you said, a little younger, those are guys you look up to. Uh seeing myself on the bad end of highlights off the games has been fun. That's something I I didn't uh, I didn't enjoy my first couple of times, but now I now I'm kinda of used to it. It's definitely a tough transition from junior to, to the National Hockey League, but you seem to hit the ground running with 17 goals uh, your first year, and you're poised to break 30 for the first time. Uh, how much has uh, Rod Brendamore, uh, you know, been part of that success and just your preparation, you know, in the off season, but uh, you know, just the ability that he has everyone to run for a, run through a wall for him. So, how big has Brendamore played in your development? Yeah, he's been he's been unreal. He's not only everyone knows how good of a coach he is and, and what he brings to the table, but uh, another person I think what makes everyone really want to play for him. He's just a really good dude. He's someone that uh, I think you know whatever he asks you, he would have done on the ice himself, whether it's block shot, uh, hit guys, stuff like that. So it's pretty easy to get up every game and uh, and play for someone like that. With Seth Jarvis of the Carolina Hurricanes, second in the division right now as we're down to the stretch run, 75 games into the season. Already in your young career, you got 29 NHL Stanley Cup playoff games under your belt, and I mentioned earlier that you performed in both series. What did you and the team learn in losing the last two years that you think will help you in the 2024 playoffs? Yeah, yeah. not something I want to remember, but... Uh, especially last year, I think just how tough it was to get that spot and, and how close we were, but still how far you had to go. And just, uh, I think you saw us forward just a lot at the right time. I think when you can, when you can find your stride going to playoffs and going there with a little momentum, you can really make some noise. And that's what we're trying to do. Uh, can you describe for the listeners just how much harder it is to perform in the playoffs or the last 10, 15 games of the year, just with regards to the tighter checking and less penalties called to how much harder it is to perform uh, as opposed to the regular season? Yeah, <laughs> it gets tough. It gets a lot more physical. I think a lot more adrenaline popping for everyone's kind of flying around out there, especially in the first couple games. But, I mean, it's the same for everybody. Everyone wants to play there, and I think when you get in that moment 
all you can think about is, is kind of the end goal and, and just working as hard as you can to, to kind of win those games and, and get as close as possible. Uh, are you driving just a 2012 Ford, uh, you know, uh, banged up car, or are you ready to drive something big here as uh, the payday's coming? <laughs> I'm, I'm still humming with my. I got a 2019 Volkswagen Tiguan. on am speed up pretty good, but we. Uh, I don't know. What, I don't know what's in store. Hopefully, like you said, a, a little pay raise would be nice, and then I go car shopping. But that's uh, that's to be determined. MLB Network Radio is your home for 24-7 baseball talk, featuring on-site coverage of every major event from spring training through the World Series and expert analysis from former general managers and players. Sirius XM, Channel 89. I'm Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM NHL schedule for Thursday, April the 4th. All times are Eastern, and please remember, all games, times, and channels are subject to change. Check SiriusXM.com for the latest updates. In the NHL, 7 p.m., Montreal Canadiens take on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Canadians on XM220 Internet 935, Lightning on Internet 946. 7 p.m., Columbus Blue Jackets take on the New York Islanders. Blue Jackets on XM219 Internet 928, Islanders on Internet 938. 7 p.m., Washington Capitals take on the Pittsburgh Penguins. Capitals on XM222 Internet 950, Penguins on Internet 942. 7 p.m. Carolina Hurricanes take on the Boston Bruins. Hurricanes on Sirius and XM channels 91 Internet 925, Bruins on Internet 922. 7 p.m. Ottawa Senators take on the Florida Panthers. Senators on XM221 Internet 940, Panthers on Internet 932. 8 p.m. Winnipeg Jets take on the Calgary Flames. Jets on XM206 Internet 951, Flames on Internet 924. 8 p.m. Nashville Predators take on the St. Louis Blues. Predators on XM207 Internet 936, Blues on Internet 945. 8 p.m. Minnesota Wild take on the Colorado Avalanche. Wild on XM223 Internet 934, Avalanche on Internet 927. 10.30 p.m. San Jose Sharks take on the LA Kings. Sharks on Sirius and XM channels 91 Internet 943, Kings on Internet 933. I'm Frank Trachtenberg with your Sirius XM NHL schedule for Thursday, April the 4th. All times are Eastern, and please remember, all games, times, and channels are subject to change. Check SiriusXM.com for the latest updates. In the NHL, 7 p.m., Montreal Canadiens take on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Canadiens on XM220 Internet 935, Lightning on Internet 946. 7 p.m., Columbus Blue Jackets stick on the New York Islanders. Blue Jackets on XM219 Internet 928, Islanders on Internet 938. 7 p.m., Washington Capitals take on the Pittsburgh Penguins. Capitals on XM222 Internet 950, Penguins on Internet 942. 7 p.m., Carolina Hurricanes stick on the Boston Bruins. Hurricanes on Sirius and XM channels 91 Internet 925, Bruins on Internet 922. On the court and off, your home for the NBA is Sirius XM. Follow all the drama as your favorite team vies for it all. Sirius XM NBA Radio, Sirius XM 86. Some hockey observers expressed surprise at just how busy Colorado Avalanche general manager Chris McFarland was as the trade deadline approached. But talking to host Dave McCarthy on the Sunday brunch on NHL Network Radio, Sirius XM Channel 91, Avs television broadcast crew member Kyle Keefe says McFarland simply knew what the team needed to remain Western Conference contenders and was doing his job in trying to get it. Why do you think general manager Chris McFarlane was as active as he was? Well, it's it's kind of funny because I go back to the 2019-2020 Tampa Bay Lightning and the, and the guys that they picked up with all of the talent that they had. And, I, you know, I think that the Avalanche learned in 2022 that depth and the idea of being an angry team wins in the postseason. You can have all the talent in the world. If you don't have those guys that will stick their 